to make it to the semi-finals. But overall, Sean, I mean, going into this first map, it being Foxtrot Labs, it being MMA's choice here, what does, what does Bomber have to be thinking? Is he just going to open his usual standard kind of play? What has he got to be thinking against MMA? I mean, you, you've had a long time to prepare for this. You know the map pool. You know what's more, more than likely going to be vetoed. You're going to be using what you've prepared for the last week. That's the beauty of a game like StarCraft. Once you have time to prepare, you know exactly what you're going to do on every single map. The first one should all be about the preparation they've pulled up beforehand, and then you adapt the longer this series goes. What weaknesses has he been displaying? Where can I exploit to gain a simple edge and a simple victory? Mm. Both players have chosen to open up here with a gas first, so we are going to see a bit of an aggressive and explosive start to this series. And from there, we'll see who gets damage done, who can defend well, and what specifically are they aiming towards with a faster factory which they're going to be aiming to get here. Yeah, a few angles of attack on this map overall. With the spawning locations working out as they have, uh, there is certainly a lot of opportunity to poke in with those Banshees, try right. and get that going. But likewise, also, we've seen the kind of go-to of Hellions with medevac drops yeah. and Marines. At Etc. that have played out in this match as well. So there's a lot of options. Gas first is, of course, a very popular build, um, but neither of these players obviously know that's what their opponent's doing. Yeah. So they've chosen it. They're not sure this could be, for all they know, a command center first. It could be a Reaper expand. It's not certain that your opponent's going to open up like this. So precautions mm. need to be made here. Does somebody want to open up aggressive straight away? And it looks like MMA may be leaning towards that with a second gas coming in here. Of course, Bomber can still play aggressive as well. So we'll see here. Who goes for what? Is Bomber going to be going for what it looks like? A Medivac, a couple of Hellions, maybe a Mine or two, a Marines, and maybe start to push out early. MMA, second gas, means Banshees are possible, Raven possible, options are a little bit more out there for MMA. Yeah, and because this series is so, so important at this point, they, you, we could see a feel-out game. We could do, but again, with people having prepared as much as they have been able to during this last week, there is a lot of opportunity for, like, calculated aggression. Yeah. I mean, these Marines are already positioned to deny a Reaper if it was coming in. Anything Absolutely. like that, really covering his bases here. But at this point, the Reaper would have already made its way in, so that so kind of strategy is starting to eliminate itself now. Mm. Unless it was a later Reaper, which you do often see come in to get some additional information, Though, we may start to see both players wanting to get the information necessary. And because they have no units out on the map, we may see a scan come in from one of them very shortly to try to figure out what their opponent's up to. But we do see Banshee from both. A little bit more of a dedication here from MMA with Cloak being invested into. Obviously with that faster second gas here. And if you're going to go for a Banshee like this for Bomber, what anti-air does he really have at the moment? He's only got a handful of Marines, limited amount of energy on the Orbital Command, obviously. Mm -hmm. And in the end, you know, these weird Banshee mm. versus Banshee scenarios can end with a lot of damage if you're yeah. not careful about it. And one of the biggest weaknesses that Bomber's had throughout his year, also a strength at the same time, is he doesn't really like to scan very much. He likes to use his energy for mules, which may be a reason why MMA's chosen this strategy. But we'll see. Are we going to see a Raven built next from Bomber? Does he want to build a Banshee, then switch over to Raven? Yes, he will. Mm. MMA is going to try and feel out his opponent here. He's got a Hellion on the other side of the map. And for the first time here, these two Banshees will cross each other, and they're going to know exactly how they've opened. Yeah, and that gives a lot of information away in the end, as you just yeah. mentioned. Uh, so now at least they can prepare for this. So they know exactly now. Neither of them know if it's Cloak or not, though. Mm. MMA's dedicated extra money to Cloak, but with a Raven out, if he doesn't get damage done, he's the one who spent more into this, so he really does need to get something done here. Uh, obviously, uh, because we haven't seen such an investment from Bomber, he's got a much faster second base here. Any mistake mm. of control could be deadly at this point. Remember, there's a mine yeah, on this exactly. right-hand side here. I want to try chase it into that. Well, there's one mine on the outside, actually, not really being able to do a whole lot against this Banshee positioning as it is Cloak. There's the Raven! Oh, oh. Oh, oh there's a mine! That's really going to cause a lot of problems. He's not looking. Oh, losing that at the start. MMA gets a great start here, and he's still got his Banshee alive. A fantastic start for the Acer player. And all he needs to do now is get a couple more SCVs. He's going to find himself in a beautiful position. We do see Bomber losing SCVs, down in supply. He's got a third command center being built, so he's going on the complete defensive right now. But this opens up MMA controlling this game from this point on. Yeah, uh, he's got his own command center on the way behind all of this. But again, there is the opportunity for him just to be the player. Oh, but in the end, that died yeah. a little bit anticlimactically. Yeah, slight mistake there from MMA. MMA did not want to lose it so easily. There was no need to lose it there. But as you can see, at this point, uh, it's pretty equal, to be honest. MMA's got a...
small worker lead. Um, but he could have got a lot more from that. But at this point, it's a very equal-ish game right now. We're going to move on to the next part here. We've passed the early build order stage. It's time to take the second base. You can secure it easily. There's no threat because both of these players have gone three command centers, which means they haven't dedicated resources to add on more production, to mm. build an army faster. So the pace of the game now is going to slow down a little bit. We're going to start to work on towards building up your economy, getting your upgrades coming in as we start with Bomber, plus one attack on the way to his infrastructure, going to mm. benefit him in the long run, but... does perhaps make him a little bit weaker if Bomber was to start to... Bomber is the kind of guy that I watch in TVT and you see him going for the split up his force in such a way to then yeah. pressure through towards the natural path on the right hand side of MMA's base. So he's going to be covering that so diligent. This map at this stage of the game is once you're moving into the middle of the map now as we see both armies on the natural soon to be taking the third as they did mm. go for three command centers, your main base becomes very, very exposed which is what you brought out is going to be a Good point for both players to keep their eyes on, not to allow such a simple drop to work as already there. We could see one load up soon from Bomber. Yeah. But Bomber's infrastructure, I just think, is a little bit asses there. But overall, very close game. Almost nothing between them. Yeah, so better way, no better way, really, to start this series. Series offers. He's got tanks set up in good positions. He's adding on yeah. extra. Hill map medevac loading yeah. up two, in fact. Oh, big May. dedication here from MMA. Got that immediately. So nice play wow. there from Bomber. And luckily, they just kind of sees that. I'm not too sure what that medevac is doing, but Bomber has got a bit of a trap set up here. He's got a tank inside the here. Bomber's going to get such a lead. Yeah, he this has to pull huge. back. He has to boost and pull back. There's yeah. no way he's going to be able to do anything there. Uh, well defended. Marine's going to set off to, up to the top, but this Raven looking to spot if there was a drop on the right hand. We're scouting Medivac there, just having a quick look around. Spotted the drop, saw the third base. Bit of a confirmation overall from MMA, but both players very cautious here not to lose mm. the kind of level pegging in this game at this point. But MMA's got his 1-1 one, one completed now. He should be close to his armory done so he can start 2-2. Two, two. And by the time he gets to 2-2 two, two upgrades, because he went for the double engineering bay, he's going to be rocking it in these fights. With those type of upgrades compared to Bomber, who is slightly behind in those, a huge advantage there for, for MMA once he does get to that point. Yeah, definitely. There's not actually no armory out just yet here for Bomber by the looks of things. So there is going to be a bit of a, a drag in his mm. position completely. Uh, so if if MMA yeah. can keep going through this and like establish this advantage whilst right. the upgrades are going, then he'll be absolutely soaring. Yeah, those two upgrades are so big in this point. The biggest advantage MMA has in this game, he's got to be careful. Tanks are sieged up. No combat shields quite done here for uh, Bomber, so there's no way he can fight. But at this point, it's still feeling your opponent out, skirmishes of individual Marines around the map yeah. because you don't want to miss an army moving. If tanks siege up on your third, outside your you know, natural, inside the main, they get dropped in your main, you can almost lose the game. You must have full information on your opponent on almost all times. And the armor is on the way here. In production, his army supply is a little bit up on his opponent right now. Bomber's marching through at this point. Remember, he didn't invest as much into his infrastructure as exactly. MMA did. So he's a little bit larger. MMA must be in defensive position. If he gets to his two short upgrades, like I said, that's where he's going to be good. But right now, he could be a little bit weak if he loses his position. Yeah. Scouts on the army must know where to siege, where not to siege. And then we are going to see Bomber back off still. If he finds position on this third base, which I think he's probably looking towards getting. Definitely. It's, it's hard to actually reinforce oh, down is there. Is he going to go? There's enough tanks here, though, for MMA. If he sets up a position. There's a has got to siege up. Ah, oh, that one tank at the back is kind of far away. Yeah. But Bomber is looking for an opportunity because, again, that 2-2 two -two is just a, oh, a soon going to be finishing for MMA, which will yeah. give him a lead in terms of that army count. Yeah, uh, Bomber's really pushing through here. 
Mm -hmm. Really looking to break this, but uh, MMA's defense, strong. He has his tank yeah. line. It's incredibly difficult to break that. Looks like the Raven is going to go down. Hunter Seeker missed that time. He picks it up. Oh. Well, it still gets a bit of damage done there, but uh, it does evade the explosion there. Little push forward to the few of these siege tanks. Here comes a Hunter Seeker missile unloading. Oh, no, not, 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 not quite as fast as MMA, though. No. Got to have the quick reactions here as... Yeah, but the air count here, the Vikings pushing back. It's it's almost like MMA has position here. He can edge forward a little bit. There's no air control. And now those two two upgrades about to complete. Uh -oh. Bomber realizes he's in a bit of trouble right now. Yeah. He's lifted up all his units. And oh my god, all the Marines are down here. This is actually a disaster here for Bomber if he boosts that way. He he's, doesn't he, know about it. I think he knows that he's been seen by the Vikings here, though. The Marines are well oh! positioned. He needs to be very, very careful. That very was careful. Incredibly tense there. He cannot make a mistake with this type of army. Oh, he's actually gonna go. No, 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 no. You can't do that. You actually yeah. cannot do that in that position. Those Marines will absolutely rip them out of the sky. 2-2 two, two is done, 3-3 three, is on the way, Bomber's struggling in upgrades right now, MMA's holding his defense incredibly strong, Bomber's trying to go for it again, uh -oh. if he plants all those units inside the main base, everything uh -oh. will get shredded. Uh-oh, this is the exact way, he dropped a scan, he's looking for units here, this is an opportunity for Bomber to get on top of this infrastructure, do a lot of damage, and then he can maybe even try and push up the front if MMA gives up that position, but this is a very tense moment, a lot of Marines coming in to try and deal with it, but they're not in a great position to deal with Bomber's. Uh, he's in there, but he's not getting a lot of done. There's a lot of Marines here from it, and he's Boost got down. the upgrade advantage, and he will push he's Bomber looking for it. back. He's looking for it on the third base, though, trying to get position with his siege tanks. A few Marines going to move up forwards, getting that bunker down, bringing down oh, that center tower. Oh, he's broken the third. A brilliant position, considering that he is behind in terms of those yeah. upgrades. He needs to find these advantages. Even though he didn't break the main base there, he pulled the army into the main to defend and then swung around to the third base to claim position here. So it wasn't successful on the front, but overall, that was a nice move. And so it was vulnerable. He saw that there weren't a lot of units there, so he can deal equal down one here by both yeah. players. It's exactly what we were talking about at the beginning with how Bomber likes to play that kind of Doom Drop style, losing the Raven there in the end. But overall, he did yeah. the same thing against Hart, and it was successful. MMA, though, has held his ground. Three, oh, and here we go again. He's going to try and do a similar thing. Yeah, there are sensor towers to help out with this, but... Torrent's coming in. I wonder if he can still break this. All the armies there, though. Uh oh. And uh, Bomber's going to boost for it. He's going to go for it. Doesn't care about just a few Marines. He's actually going to pick up some of the units himself on the pursuit. Some of those Marines, though. Oh, if he can get some Kevin of the comes in. Oh, brilliant little move here by MMA trying to shut this down. And overall, I think he should be able to clean up the majority of this. Depends on how much damage he gets uh -huh. here. Bomber deals with that counter very, very well. He's in position. And he's still got a lot of units inside the main base. And Bomber getting a lot of damage done here. And he's separating himself from MMA. Yeah, but at the same time, three. 3-3 is about to finish here for MMA. That's going to be a big deal against yeah. this. Just Marine Force in the main. Yeah, but MMA's got to clear out inside Ooh. his main base. Otherwise, Bomber's going to get himself a good lead here. Uh, one C-Tank trying to hold its own with all, with all these Marines pushing forwards. Uh, doing a little bit yeah. of damage to this infrastructure, but overall... Incredibly cost-efficient trade mm. from Bomber. That is so good. He got a lot of damage done with very few units. And now he's marching through the middle of the map again. He's got a bigger army. And as good as the upgrades are, the army size issues. These tanks, though. Whoa, Bomber. I don't want to be walking into no. Oh, no. Again. This is how he finds his advantages. He goes for that Doom Drop. He finds the position yep. and then tries. His Marine count is scaling pretty heavy. If MMA is caught on siege for some reason. Three, three upgrades are now done for MMA, though. If he can take a good fight. But right now they are bouncing off each other in the main base. Don't think we'll in the middle of the map. Sorry, I don't think we'll see too much of a fight here. But MMA slow pushing down. MMA trap marines down. Tanks in good position again here. So slow. Has to, yeah. to get his three three. I mean he's uh -oh. on two two. Here we go again, Sean. Uh -oh. this he's could, loading up. This could be brilliant, but this could also be terrible. Getting good to go. Right. And he's going to unload again here. Yeah. It's, he can't keep doing that over and over. MMA right, is right. an adaptive player. He will c catch on to this very, very quickly. Right. If not in this game, next game, uh, and then it will be yeah. game redu redundancy. It will not be too useful. There's been a pretty much 30 supply difference between the two players after Bomber's great drop inside the main base, but it's starting to equalize. And with the 3-3 upgrades done for MMA over the 2-2, that's a brilliant position to be in, but he's going to move forward here. He's going to try and get it. coming from either side here, but it's not enough. He has so many of the tanks he has on the defense of his position are very, very strong, so MMA can't continue the pursuit. Yeah, just uh, 
very uh, stalemate position once again here. Both players trading off supplies, very similar. But Bomber's taken the gold behind all of this as well. And yeah. because he's been on his opponent's side, I mean, Day9 said it on the analysis desk itself, his army is almost always... on right. MMA side of the map, and that gives him the opportunity back home to set up good economy. Players are running out of money now inside the main base and the natural. This fourth base of Bomber has now become the most important part of this game. That center base, if he starts to mine from that base uh, effectively, then he's going to absolutely dominate MMA when it comes to the army size here. As you can see, neither of them are maxed out currently. And that extra income will boost Bomber. And of course, then he can start banking money, which he can replenish much better than MMA ever will if he doesn't get his own fourth. Yeah, there was a slow movement back there for Bomber, realizing that his opponent had a few Vikings in the mix, so doesn't exactly want to get caught off guard too far away from his reinforcement yeah. location. But look at that movement on the right-hand side here of Bomber. Where is he going? Is he loading up? He drops a scan as soon as he loaded up. So MMA yeah. is really catching on to what's going oh, on here. Oh, but Bomber's got most of his units inside the main, uh, inside the medivac there, so oh. MMA does stretch forwards. And he does get a good trade-off against some of those uh -oh. C-strikes, but he's just going to go for it anyway. MMA knows, but can he stop it? Uh, I don't think so. That's a lot of medifacts here, and that, if he gets on top of this infrastructure, if he does a lot of damage to it, what is the MMA going to be able to do? This is going to be really, really difficult. All those Marines doing a lot of damage. Yeah, this is a brilliant position once again. All the Marines of MMA have to filter through the buildings, which means the tanks are going to do so much damage. MMA is in trouble. Bomber's played this very well. His Doom Drops have been gorgeous this game. And all those upgrades are slowly lining up for Bomber as well. So whilst he's been taking advantages with the Doom Drops, getting up the catch-up game with those upgrades is going to be fantastic. A little bit on move command here, so sacrificing some of these units yeah. in the end, but he needs to deal with this push at the front. Yeah, that's why he was running back there. <laughs> those Marines uh, didn't really have their priorities set straight, but four tanks just Destroying everything inside the main base. MMA has one last push in him. Bomber has all his upgrades completed. Nice drop there by MMA to try to deal with this tanks in the main base. But MMA on this third. Bomber is already sacrificed it. He says, okay, there's no need for me to attack right now. I'm mining a lot more than you. I have a lot more army than you. I get my army back together and I can defeat yours. Excellent crisis management from Bomber. Yeah, really, really well done. He knows if he can hold on, he'll be looking really, really nice. Look at how much minerals MMA has right now. Very starved down. He can't, he, even if he had money, he can't spend it because all of his yeah. infrastructure has been blown up. And now, I mean, the scans rain down here for MMA, who was in a great position with his upgrades before, but it really shows the power of the Doom Drop. Bomber has been able to make it work. As we go into first person now, and uh, Bomber just, just holding off against this. He knows if he can keep his economy strong and his infrastructure intact, he is going to be fine in game number one. That's right. The game's a, a simple game now, Kolaris. You mm -hmm. build a big army, you go kill the other guy. It's really yep. easy at this point here for Bomber, and that's what he's looking to do. He's got a great set of, uh, you know, his SUV line's brilliant. He's got a lot of money coming in. He knows he's in leading position now. Mistakes are the only way that Bomber loses this game now. He's just got to keep calm, keep composed, move forward, mm. edge forward towards his gold base. And to be honest, there's not even enough defense here. He might no. just win it right now. Not enough siege tanks to hold on against that. Sure, there's a planetary fortress. Uh, one more siege tank next to that planetary fortress will hold on at that position. Yeah. But these four tanks right there, they siege up on that gold base. Yeah. They get around the income of MMA, and he is starved out of resources. Look at the supply difference. A massive lead for Bomber. More money coming in as he's moved his third base down to this south location. And a wonderful start here for the Red Bull player. Yeah, looking good. Pushing through the middle just slightly. He's not really taking any risks now. Of course, the big Doom Drops earlier on were his risks, and they paid off. But really, really big. And now pushing forwards to take out some of these z tanks. That's the majority of all MMA has left in this game. And losing that with the Metavax as well, Bomber takes another great engagement. Absolutely. He's winning this game every second. MMA's trying to rebuild what he has, but he's got limited income. And he's rebuilding his production because he can't build an army right now so he's in terrible terrible position and bomber now with one final clean strike will end mma in this game and he will take the very first map of the world championship here series here the global finals at blizzcon and mma struggling doesn't want to leave the game early but he knows he knows yeah. that the push is coming. Yeah, and it's a big one. That's a lot of Marines. That's a lot of siege tanks. He, there's not much defense here at all for MMA. Losing this gold base is a catastrophe for him if it goes down. Losing these tanks is a catastrophe. But Bomber absolutely ransacks this location and is now sieged up. He's denying all mining. Absolutely. A hundred supply difference here between the two players of the very first series. And the position has been established on this gold base. One tank sufficient enough here to do the job. And unfortunately here, MMA very, very much so 
kind of wondering what to do, where to go, but there isn't much to do here. Where does he uh, try to go? He doesn't have an army. I mean, look at it. That is his army. And yeah. Bomber just dominant. Absolutely dominant in this game. Truly. I mean, even after MMA had an upgrade lead, Bomber finds all the angles, finds the holes, exploits them, really exerts himself upon MMA here. And there you go. GG. For now, he needs to complete the package. Yes, he does. All right, let's get back into game number two. Let's do those intros one more time as we have spawning up to the top right-hand corner. It's our blue Terran representing Team Acer. Give it up for MMA. And down to the bottom right hand corner, it's our red Terran representing Red Bull True in colors. Give it up for Bomber! Both of these players, the reigning champion of their respective region in season three of the World Championship Series. Bomber, of course, the American champion coming into this, and MMA, the European. Two very different builds, though, to start this up. We've seen MMA take a gas first here. So he's looking to play potentially similar to what he did before, which going for the fast refinery like this in the first gas pretty much gives you 100 gas when the barracks completes. When the barracks completes, the factory tech is unlocked, bam, the factory is planted and you can start to play aggressive from that standpoint. On the other side of things though, Bomber's played more of a regular opening here. This is something we see a lot more common in other matchups. It's the Reaper expansion here. So he's gonna have a much faster command center, but he's also gonna have this Reaper which can poke in, poke out, scout a little bit, maybe harass, mm -hmm. but more importantly, gather information. And then more simply, we have MMA, who needs to be the aggressor in this standpoint because he's not focused so much on his economy. And we need to see Bomber naturally become the defensive player, protecting his lead that he'll gain from this faster command center. And overall, with the spawning positions, you're eventually uh, expanding away from your opponent, unlike in cross right. positions where you're kind of expanding towards your opponent. So this game could not only go very, very long, but also, I mean, we could see the, uh, an entire map divide if it does get that long, which uh, can be right. a very, very scary position. Yeah, at this, uh, in these positions, the center Zell Naga Tower is the most important part the longer the game yeah. goes. If you control that center Zell Naga Tower, you control the middle of the map. Mm. And like you said, once you get four expansions, you have to expand away from your opponent. If he controls the map, you aren't going to do that. And he can. He'll gain the more money, he'll bring in the more money, and he will overrun you the longer the game goes. So it's going to be very important that part of the map here. But uh, looks like MMA's taking off his headset for a sec, did ask for a pause, whereas Bomber is just kind of uh, sitting patiently and kind of smiling at that uh, pause. I think he's feeling very confident today, Kolaris. Yeah. I mentioned he's on, he's on fire, he's on form recently, and coming into this, he's got the... Com I mean, he, in the round of 16 against Jadong, he promised a 100% win. And he did it again just he, now. He promised a 100% win against MMA. You can't get more confident than that. No, exactly. Uh, he's looking good so far. Looking good. Game number one was a real, uh, a real tout to that overall, as he looked so, so strong, despite not having the upgrade advantage. And mm. right now, in this, uh, on Deadwing, you know, we yeah. could see a similar scenario play out. We could do. Yeah, I mean, if Bomber wins this game, He's just setting himself up oh, yeah. to slam dunk the series. It's that simple. And MMA is going to have a very difficult time coming back against a world-class player like Bomber is. So very, very important for MMA fans, for Acer fans. But uh, here on Deadwing, with the two openers that we've chosen here, Bomber has already got a bit of, a bit of information. He doesn't know exactly what's going on because, well, okay, now he does with the Reaper going in. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly what he's playing against. He even takes out the first Marine. And now all of a sudden, MMA is being pressured. He's, he's asked to pull an SCV off to Ooh. actually, you know, to not die, but it dies anyway. The starport was delayed a quick second there. And already, Bomber just starting off this series excellently. Full information, a little bit of harassment, and he's got all information. Yeah, very, very good overall. And Bomber is the kind of guy also, I mean, I don't think we touched on it too much before, but he's the kind of guy who has such variance in his builds that if he wants to later on, he can also go make himself, which is a very, very scary thing to look at when you look at how good his marine right. tank play is, and then even if he's able to mix and mech himself, it's, uh, it becomes a very, very hard puzzle to solve for MMA on the other end. Well, at this point, MMA is going to figure out what he's playing against. He knows that uh, Reaper opening, he now 100% confirms that the command center is there, even though he probably knew that was the case anyway. And it looks like the Hellion's going to get the better end of this Reaper here. Mm. One more hit, and then that will go down. And he uh, 
already knows kind of what he's playing against here, but we see a very defensive setup coming out from Bomber. Engineering Bay coming in for turrets. Yep. Widow Mines coming in to deal with the Banshees. And a couple of Hellions to deal with this, and he does deal with that Hellion quite well here. And depending on where he puts those Widow Mines, it yeah, could get very sticky. Look at MMA. He, he hasn't decided to uh, switch up and oh. go for a command center. He's added on a second tech lab onto the factory. And at this point, he is dedicating a lot of resources to his one base. We're going to see Banshees, we're going to see Tanks, we're going to see Marines come down here. He needs to break Bomber with this type of push. If he doesn't break Bomber, because he's not trying to get a command center in, the game just naturally ends. This is a massive moment here for MMA. Yeah, it's big. It's very big because overall, this yeah. is a very strong push. You have so much control with that, with the space mm. at the front, having those siege tanks. Bomber's getting a Viking okay. mixed in. Bomber doesn't know what he's playing against, so these Hellions are very important. If he gets over there, sees the lack of command center, maybe even sees a tank, he can start to build towards mm. this because right now he does not know what he's playing against. He does not have sufficient defense to deal with this currently. This is a big part of this game. I mean, he's going to start to move out here. He needs to get some damage done to slow Bomber down. He may be too preoccupied with dealing with these Banshees for now. I mean, the Missile Turret's in a good spot yeah. to be able to deny that. Here comes the Viking as well. That m yeah. Banshee should be just it's, out of It's only Hellions, though. Hellions aren't that mm. good against Tank Marine pushes here. And for the first time, Bomber's going to see exactly what he's playing against. And now comes the question, can Bomber hold on? He's 10 supply behind, and he's three workers ahead, which really strengthens the army size that MMA currently holds. It's going to be a bit scary, uh, that Banshee. He, if he was to eliminate the Banshees, then he would have an okay uh, situation going right. on. That's actually going to run out of energy pretty soon, so those Vikings yeah. chasing is very, very important. Yeah, this is a big move there, and already we see a Bunker Rush coming in from uh -oh. him. He's got the Siege on the expansion. A second Banshee comes in. A very important moment here for both players. This can end really fast. But here come the Hellions. Very few units here. Those Hellions are actually being focused down by the Banshee oh. to start things off. But if you can the get Banshee's the Banshee... going to escape. Oh. It gets out the vision range of the Skag. Getting some extra kills. An armor is about to finish up. So we will see Hellbats to help defend this. He needs any unit he can get at this point. But again, because he has so many Hellions, it makes sense ah, to do that. The but the Siege, tank, the Siege Tank also being sieged up at this range right. now. This is it. He's going to try and break it. Hellbats is the choice. Does he break it? Vikings landing, here we go! All right, here we go, with those Hellbats trying to march on forwards. They're going to tank up a lot of damage here. There's only one, two, oh, second siege tank at the back as well. He needs to try and close the gap. He's actually doing a pretty good job with these Hellbats, but once he deals with that, the Banshee isn't going down at all either, so he's still going to take a lot of damage. Those Vikings need to be up and doing what they need to do. Yeah, fantastic defense there from uh, Bomber and does push this back. Banshee's still a threat, but currently so are these Hellions and Vikings, so Whoop. you've got to think about the counter-attack possibilities here for Bomber as well. MMA is in the lead with eight workers. It was a, success, a successful attack. It didn't kill Bomber. But as long as he doesn't die to a potential counter, then he's going to be able to move into the middle part of this game with a lead. Yeah, yeah. Overall, really equalizing things up uh, and then propelling himself forward here as MMA just a little bit. Maybe uh, the double uh, command center being done can, you know, kind of make up for a few of the SCVs here for Bomber. But overall, it doesn't look like he's moving out just yet. So. No, it's not. And... Uh, as the command center of MMA finishes up now, which Bomber not 100% certain is there, but can start to imagine it is, mm. considering the pressure's held off for now. But a good deflection there from Bomber, but MMA successful with the push, does gain a six-worker lead. And Bomber building two medivacs currently. Medivacs, pretty uh, useless for a defensive player at this uh, stage of the game, but very useful if you're going to lift up some units to start to harass the mineral lines here. With Viking support still around, maybe he wants to keep them at home in case there's Banshees still present. This can deal a lot of damage. With MMA having the majority of his army in the middle of the map here, he's not expecting this type of counter, this type of move from Bomber. And he doesn't really have... Well, he's got a few units there. Mm -hmm. And the Viking will give him heads up as well, right? So uh, he should be okay against this, as long as it doesn't somehow find its way to the mineral line and get some good shots off. But this is already a really good warning. Yeah. If the Marines come in to snipe that medivac, then it's going to go down, and yeah. simple Viking is going to be good enough to stop that. But here come four for Bomber. It's yeah. going to get onto this Banshee and then open up this right flank. But this does give MMA time to get you know more defense there. So Exactly. It gives him that little opportunity. Um, these are trying to head over to the natural, but he's finding the one spot of... Um, but it has been spotted in the end, and he starts focusing on the weakened medevac okay, again. In one more shot would have done big damage. Yeah, and unfortunately, Bomber can't find a weakness in MMA, so MMA continues to hold on to the lead he established. 
He's uh, got a worker supply, but more importantly, he's got just an overall army supply advantage now. It's going to be mech for Bomber here. So again, as we said at the beginning, no stranger to it. Uh, there is a bit of vulnerability here, though, for, for Bomber later on. We, we've seen him actually be yeah. spearheaded through the middle when he sets himself up in, in odd locations with his mech. Um, so... And MMA having the advantage he has with his Marine tank, he could just try and push three. He's already acting on the Marauders as well. So yeah, a clash of styles now, the classic bio play versus the mecking play at this mm. point. Uh, I'm not too sure what he's looking to, to do here. He's kind of killing his own turret. Maybe it's kind of disrupting the worker line. He'd rather just Maybe. get rid of it than, uh, than have some extra defense against Banshees. But mech versus bio, MMA stim is almost done. From this point on, Bomber must transfer Everything he had planned in the series, if he was planning to be the aggressive player, must sit back and play defensive now. MMA needs to take map control, mm -hmm. needs to be the aggressor, and needs to be the one controlling the pace of the game. Needs to be the player using those medivacs he's famous for. Needs to start getting and finding weaknesses and areas to exploit to further his lead. The longer the game goes, and if Bomber gets closer and closer to a large army, the easier of a time he'll have defending with a few units, and then striking straight through the middle with a mech army that's meant to be unbreakable. And in the end, for now, for Bomber, there's only actually one siege tank out. He's adding to, having to add on these extra two just to really kind of catch up. He needs that like strong fortificated fortification position, really, to be able right. to deal with this. Blue Flame Hellions aren't going to kill off uh, you know, an entire army moving forward, so he absolutely needs good spots with those siege tanks. Well, MMA is powered up very well off two bases here. He's got a lot of production, and he's got a large army. He's moving through the middle here. This is the part of the game where Bomber's defense must be... It has to be solid. There's yeah. no other way. You cannot allow yourself to be broken here. You don't need to rush out to take your third base. You can sit on two, but you cannot allow your opponent to drop you, to contain you, mm -hmm. to deal damage in any shape or manner. Exactly, because overall, oh, he's actually picked up some of these Hellbats. He's looking to push out against this. Uh, some of the Hellbats on the left-hand side didn't really do the damage that they needed to do. This is a good concave set up here by MMA as well. He's pushing forward, killing off so many Hellbats. And now it's only naked siege tanks at the back, but it's not that big an army here for Bomber. Yeah, Bomber got brutalized there as he moved down. And a big drop coming into the main base here. Tanks do move into position to deal with it, but I feel that MMA has got a, quite a good position here. Yeah, as we said before, the big vulnerability in this mech when he's trying to make it work, when he's also behind. The SCVs come off the line. A lot of those are dying off to the siege tank fire. And he doesn't even have that much army himself to push this back in the end. MMA is having great trades overall, even losing the majority of his. Absolutely. And all he's got to do is pick off units here and just kind of wear Bomber down. Supply difference is not too big between the two of them. Oh. But a good set of attacks there from MMA. He's lost a little bit of his momentum, though, as he did throw all his units into Bomber. And Bomber, still with quite a few left, is going to move down to take this third base. Did lose SCVs in trade-off. Cute little move there with that one last Marine to get that siege tank for MMA. Yeah. Uh, really trying to just make up for any position uh, there at the front. But at least, well, he's got a little bit of a position set up outside here. The third bases, though, are going down at a relatively similar time with and Bomber is, trying to catch up. This is good for Bomber there. Maybe mm. MMA overextended a little bit there. I think clearing up the third was good. The drop of the main base didn't work as well, but he's still got a decent position here. A siege tank that has range into the mineral line is always very good to have. <laughs> Uh, to be able to deny your opponent that mining time. And another drop coming in. Mm, there's a few siege tanks here, though, already to be able to push this away. So MMA doesn't want to continue overextending. Again, you've got to be wary about these Vikings as well, uh, as Bomber currently has the better position air dominance-wise at this frontal position. Yeah, pretty... Uh... I mean, there's not too much of a difference between the two players right now. Um, MMA is still the one controlling the game. He's got a bit of an army advantage. The supply is very similar, which is actually pretty good here for Bomber. But MMA, while being the aggressive player, can find areas mm. to further his lead. Like mentioned before, this is the area to do so. And right now, unfortunately, there is a... Uh a gray area for Bomber, which yeah. is left of his natural, which he just didn't even think of. And MMA walks in and says, well, you don't have anything here. You didn't expect me to just walk up the front door. And now look at this. This is just a huge amount of damage coming in from MMA. Yeah, the mech position isn't enough here as the bio is going to be able to try and tear this down. He's repairing it, though. He's going to be able to save this command center while the siege tanks on the right-hand side shell away at some of that bio. He took yeah. some damage, but overall, saving the command center was okay for Bomber. But he's lost position on his natural. He cannot mine yeah. from this location, which is very good for MMA. A counter drop is coming in to try to bring down this SCV count, and how many are we going to get here? There's not too many SCVs there. He only gets about three or four. Yeah, almost mined out at this location, 
so can easily transfer away yeah. and go to another place. Picking up some of these units, where is he going to go with that? The Hellbats trying to do something, but they're going to go to the natural. Bomber's weakness was that left flank. He did not see this, he did not expect it, and now he's being punished for it. And looking to drop in here, but again, good reactions there from MMA. Another drop in this mineral line too, so he's denying a lot of mine time, but MMA likewise is dro uh, dropping in multiple locations. Both players stretching each other thin and denying so much mining. But the most important part of this for this series for MMA is that he's not dead. Yep, he's yep. leading in this series, and that's what he needed to do coming to map number two here. He's inside the main base, he's on the third base, he's on the natural as well. MMA in three locations aggressively while defending at the same time. This is what we needed to see from MMA, and this is going to bring him equal in this series. All he's got to do is close it up, keep on defending versus those Hellbat drops, and he is looking at a 1-1 in this series. Targeting down some extra SCVs there as well, and just macroing back at home, keeping himself in a good spot, uh, at the same time trying to reposition onto that third base, always keeping the pressure yeah. on, knowing that the mecking player cannot gather momentum any further. Exactly. It's, it's a really nice play here so far by MMA. Just keep throwing units at your opponent, keep wearing him down, and that's where victory will lie. And trying to find angles here is Bomber to, to bring himself out of this hole he's found himself in. That's a good pickup once again for MMA, who keeps bringing down anything that Bomber wants to try and throw at him. He's completely dominating. He's on the second half of this map, or on Bomber's side of the map, should we say. He's mining efficiently, he's building a lot of units, he's got his 2-2 oh. upgrade seconds from completing, and he's got so many multiple different angles to attack from. Bomber's got to defend in so many locations, it's almost impossible to do so. Now he's defending this ramp area, is his main base exposed? Is the back of his natural now exposed? Are these areas where MMA will want to pick up in medivac to start to swing around? Because it looks like Bomber's kind of fortified the front door, but there are other weak spots to kind of exploit. Look at this, there's nothing here. A drop around the side, instant death. Yeah. Drop into the main base, instant death. These are things where MMA needs to start to pick up and try to find a way to once again do damage to Bomber. And Bomber in the end trying to gain some traction, but as you said, you know, if you're trying to kind of macro up and get all your army going at the same time and defending the front yeah. so heavily, how are you going to be able to defend your main? You have a few missile turret shot. Oh, oh and that Hellbat spotting that kind is sees nice. it, and that is a. Uh, more than enough there for Bomber Ooh. to notice what's going on. He doesn't really have a circle of turrets here, and three medivacs will get in. Well, at least one siege tank's already there to help on out. He has to pick up some of the Hellbats to get back, though. Overall, trying to clean this up, the bio, though, is getting all right trades for him. It's not too terrible here for MMA. No, I mean, it looks like uh, MMA's gonna oh. break a couple of these tanks, and that is great. Good micro there from Bomber to save one of them, but he's not gonna be able to save all of, all of them. SCBs are going to die here, and MMA trading off again. Good trade off there, good damage done. Decent defense from Bomber, but Bomber must keep the defensive game up. He must stabilize. He must have all areas of weakness covered. Once he does that is when he doesn't take damage and starts to build up that army. But for now, I think his front door is fortified. His main base is becoming more defended. There are still other areas, but Bomber is doing it. He's he's playing well, he's defending well. Slowly, slowly here at this point, as he's just a little bit behind in terms of uh, army supply. Overall, behind a little bit in worker supply, and plus three weapons yeah. is on the way for MMA as well. If Bomber takes this fourth base and, and takes his pocket four expansions and defends all four, MMA's in trouble. Yep. Then he needs to start thinking of a switch up, air switch up, um, you know, rapid expansions, other ideas. Right now, Bomb has started to make the defense possible. As good as MMA has been able to find weaknesses, is as good as Bomber's been able to deflect and kind of defend his own weaknesses. Yeah, uh, he is finding a little bit of uh, room here, a little bit of traction, even denying the fourth base from continuing production here uh, as he flies on forwards to have a little bit of a look around once again, see if he can do some damage in that natural mineral line, but there's not too much room. So he has to be careful about where he wants to take these engage. Every unit is very, but look, but look at the supplies now. Bomber yeah. really evening things up. The workers are even. The mecking army is slowly gaining really good traction. And uh, I love these drops by Bomber. Keeping the pressure off himself and putting it onto MMA yeah. to allow him to establish these bases. MMA is having a hard time, or he's not really having a hard time, but he's really focused on defending these type of drops. Even though some of them are getting damaged, some aren't getting damaged, it's all about the time and the pressure that Bomber's relieving from himself. He's got those four bases up and running. Does he have them all defended? Mm, possibly at this point. But this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky for MMA. He's about to have plus three attack complete. That is going to help in these fights. 
But does he have enough to break Bomber? Because this, as mentioned, is starting to favor Bomber. Yeah, uh, it's, you don't just, even though you have all these upgrade advantages, you don't just charge into a tank line and pray to uh, no. it doesn't go back too deep, because right now Bomber's tank line is going to be going back quite deep if those three siege tanks on this right-hand side don't just position yeah. themselves nicely. So MMA from here on out still has to find angles on the left and the right and try and draw this mecking player uh, a little bit uh, to either side. Yeah, and Bomber's already built building Vikings and adding on Thors. So an air switch at this point from MMA is a little bit difficult to implement. And I really have to commend Bomber for thinking ahead already. He's thinking moves ahead. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, I've defended. It doesn't look like you can break me. So what are you going to do? Are you going to make an air switch, which is the most popular way to play against mech? And he's already thinking about that with adding on Vikings and Thors. This game is now a problem and a puzzle that MMA needs to, to, to figure out. Yeah, uh, and Bomber somehow, some way is still alive. Uh, and MMA hasn't found another hole just yet. He drops a scan, sees these siege yeah. tanks well positioned for this fourth base, and he's going to be knowing now that the yeah. economies are pretty similar at this point. Bomber is going to push out soon. No doubt, he has to push out soon. He's got a huge army. He's got enough to defend and attack at the same time. The question is, what does MMA do? He's got a siege tank line in the middle of the map to try to hold the line. He's got a sensor tower to see the army coming. He's having a scan around, as we can hear in C's. He's expecting this push to come. And here it is. How does MMA deal with this? Mm. If we see... Oh, I think Bomber's going to attack into this. Yeah, he may well, do. Maybe not. He might try to drop these Hellbats onto the army, then move in with the rest. And I think that's the approach he's going to take. And MMA hold the line. All right. Here come the Hellbats raining down from the sky very quickly to try and soak up some of this damage, position themselves against some of this bio as well. There's so many units loaded up at these medevacs, not really helping out in the fight. But in the end, the bio is able to hold a little bit strong, but he had to trade some of the siege tanks away for that fight. Yeah, he did. But MMA does hold the line. If that had been broken, then he could have pushed forward. Bomber's got a huge Viking lead currently, which means he can edge the Vikings back and crawl towards the middle here. Of course, the Dalnog Tower is very important at this point, but he can take the air dominance. Mm, yeah, those Vikings doing a lot of work here, really providing him great vision. That one four moves forwards and tanks up a lot of the yeah. damage overall. And he saw uh, the majority of his opponent's army, so he knows what he's playing against right now. MMA cannot lose the center of the map. Loses that Zell Nogi Tower, the game heavily in favor of Bomber, which means Bomber controls the expansions, because currently Ooh. MMA can still do it. And that was a nice pick off there. A nice pick off from MMA and a slight mistake from Bomber, as MMA does have a fifth base to the top, top left. But still, he's starting to lose the middle here. Yeah. That tank is gone. He has no vision range. Bomber can edge forward now. Bomber can take the Zelnoga Tower. And oh my god, MMA is starting to feel the pressure. He's loaded up three medivacs full of units. Can he pull Bomber back? Can he keep the attention of Bomber away from the push? Yeah, he's got to be very, very careful here. As he needs units to be able to deal with this. If he can get some SCVs, anything here, even like a, a factory or something, a command center, all the damage is good. He's also pressuring on the right-hand oh, side as yeah. well, getting another cancellation whilst he has that base up to the top. Top left hand corner trades for here so far for MMA are doing all right. Brilliant play under pressure when you're facing a mech army pushing through the middle. Whoa. You are very frightened, but MMA is moving down the right flank. He's dropping on the natural. He's buying himself time, and most importantly, Kolaris, he's trading off his army supply while being able to replenish it, and that is so good. Two minutes ago, Bomber was at 200 supply. He's down to 140. He's losing tanks, he's losing Hellbats, and MMA is still at 180 supply. He's gonna be able to rebuild, and this is some world-class play coming out from the Ace of Terror. If he's able to hit all these locations, kill off the siege tanks while they're in siege, because they have to be moving, what are you gonna be able to do here as Bomber? He can't separate himself so thinly. He Look can't at give the up. supply difference. It's 120 yeah. to 190 from a push that looked like he could Go straight through the middle and potentially end the game. MMA has turned this one around. Very, very good stuff here from MMA. And overall, look at this. Bomber had to give up the position in the middle that he had because he doesn't have that many units to be able to hold on at the back. And his economy is ravaged. He lost everything. His economy, the majority of his army, his positioning. Beautiful oh. play. And now the tax run sees free gift here for Bomber. That's what happens when you lose a lot of this position. And he goes through GG. Opening up as we've described throughout the series with the gas first, which leads to the faster factory, which leads to the earlier aggression. Neither of them want to try to play defensive in the start of this game. Trying to play defensive on this type of map can be very difficult to actually succeed with. Yeah. So they're saying, you know what, I don't care. If you play defensive, I'm gonna break you with my aggression. If both players play aggressive, this can become tricky. Some aggressive builds do have slight 
favorisms over the other ones, so we'll see where they go with this exactly. Yeah, good map for Reapers overall. There's a lot of base uh, area to jump into your main base, uh, namely up to the top here uh, if you we're talking about Bomber because this ledge is so yeah. wide. Very hard to cover yeah. all of that area. Despite opening up gas first here, there, there is one build that kind of skews off to be defensive despite opening up aggressive, and that's the fast Raven opening. Mm. Because Banshees are so common on a map like this, and you can, you've got a lot of airspace to play with and a lot of room, you do often see players go blind Banshee, just straight off the bat Banshee. It's a weak style or, or a little bit weak against really fast expansion builds unless you utilize the Raven to be aggressive, but very good against an opponent who opens up either Widow Mine or Banshee play. So does one of these players decide to potentially counter one of the more popular builds in that Cloak Banshee mm -hmm. with a fast Raven? So. These are things to keep in consideration right away. But also, you've got to consider the fact that we, you technically could see both players do that, because Ravens have a lot of utility later on, transitioning from dealing absolutely, with the Banshee. Absolutely, absolutely they do. And Bomber, with taking a second gas, is the first player to really push himself towards that type of opening. So the two major options for Bomber, either the Banshee or the Raven. He's shown us that he does like to open up for a Banshee without Cloak, and then to the Raven, which is a little bit of aggression, making sure you're defensive enough in case there's another Banshee from your opponent. So we'll see. Whereas MMA has opened up with what we call a 1-1-1. It's Barracks, Factory, and Starport, but all off a single gas. This is actually, depending on if it's a Banshee or not, pretty good against what we're seeing from Bomber. The Marines and the Hellions that attack at such a fast speed that you're not really ready to deal with this, especially if you're going for a Raven here. So we should be seeing a Medivac. We are going to see MMA play aggressive. Is this Banshee or is this Raven? Okay, it's going to be Banshee, but in, the Banshee is good, but there's only one of them, and there's going to be a lot of Marines of mine uh, and the Medivac left in the units around. I really feel that MMA could find himself in an early game lead here if this attack is successful, because Bomber would almost need to switch around to be the defending player against this. Yeah, you see a lot of uh, good Widow Mine placements on this map, say at the top of ramps or right in the middle of them to try and catch off some units as they're transitioning on, but the Medivac's already on the way look here. Look how fast it is. It's, it's incredibly fast. Yeah, it's very, very scary here for Bomber, who right now doesn't have too much information yeah. about this at all. Well, he does have, you know, six, seven Marines and a Banshee. Depends on where the Banshee will be. The Widow Mine has been spotted. Now MMA knows what he's up against. He's got to also mentally prepare back at home for a Banshee. As good as aggression he could do, if a Cloak Banshee's in his middle and he loses his SCV, yep. it's simple, but here we go. MMA, Medivac, swings around. There's a Mine, there's Marines. How much damage can he get done? There's a late response there from Bomber. And he's got to be careful because that mine is zoning out a little Whoa. bit. This is going to try and bring Whoa. down the mine. He actually gets that. That's a really nice pick up there for MMA to start things off in this game. And now the mine is protecting his Marines yeah. here. The Banshee or Marines move forward. Obviously, you can move back here, but it looks like this mm. is going to be pushed back. SCVs are coming off the line. They're taking a lot of damage. Great it's... pick up there, by the way. He tried to detonate the mine with the SCV. Yeah. Kind of greedy uh, Marine positioning overall. He lost a few of them because they weren't yeah. being covered by that mine, but in the end, didn't do too bad. Got that Widow Mine himself. Yeah. Uh, and shut that down, so... And the Hellion's oh. gonna head on in. There's a couple of weak uh, workers, potentially. He's gonna get one of them easily here on this uh, command center, by the looks of it. Yeah. Uh, which is a nice pickup. Three. Any little thing you can get. Three SCV kills, seven supply lead, and it looks like he's dealt with the Banshee. He's got a lot of Marines and Vikings, one scan which he should have because he knew this was coming. Yeah, he should have been able to save that. He was adding on the missile oh, turret as a response. the Banshee's out, the Banshee's out. Yeah, it's gonna get away. Oof. On the edge. <laughs> very, very close. Living life on the edge, as you say. Oh, he almost went back in there. Oh, here comes the Widow Mine again. Um, can that really detonate on too much? It's just slightly out of range. Yeah, but if the Marines come in, the mine blows up on the Marines, and then the single yeah. Marine of MMA is left. But he is going to get out. Doesn't want to take too many risks. Wants to keep these units alive. Banshee dies, Ooh, but then... That's not got a lot of energy on it, so the Vikings mm. will chase. And uh, can get maybe one or two of them volleys off on this uh, as it gets out of range. So, has to be very, very careful about that control. The stop micro here. Oh, uh, it's and gone. Gets it. Nice. Really, really nice control there by MMA. And he takes a bit of a lead in this game because he's the player still with aggressive options in this medivac. It's not a lot of aggression, but it still can threaten, right? And then he's also going to start to expand a little bit faster here. And overall... Oh! That was actually uh, really good control there by uh, Bomber, who sent that SCV forwards. And likewise, MMA could have redirected that Widow Mine, but yep. uh, didn't in the end. He was probably doing something else on the other side of the map. Lots of aggressive play. Um, looks like MMA does take a small lead here. Not a big lead, but a small lead. Um, we are going to see the expansion taken a little bit faster here for Bomber, so we will start to catch up here. But overall, 
Both players with their own type of builds kind of bouncing off each other. But these three Vikings definitely going to present a threat to that Raven, obviously. Unless there is a, a bit of support here by these Marines, these air units will dominate. Yeah, and overall, I'm liking oh, what was, It's an expensive unit. That's 200 gas for a Raven. Yeah. And this is a really good pick off there by MMA. And he might even get the Banshee. Ooh, drops a scan to actually try and kill this off. If he kills this off on the other side, which he is going to, Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant there from MMA. To think that those three Ravens were used defensively against the Banshees that got turned aggressive, picked off a Raven and a, and a Banshee. That's a lot of damage from these units, which are just meant to be defensive. Yeah. Very, very well done. Very well done overall. And dropping the scan, killing off uh, the Widowmine in the end by the looks of things. I was blocking that. But overall now, MMA looking to be on the aggressive himself. It's going to be like the, the tank bio play from both of these guys again going forwards. Um, but MMA is trying to be very, very aggressive by his positioning well, well, on. The, these three Vikings are so important in this game. He has air control. He's yeah. got a medivac. He's got three tanks of his own. And he's going to start to push this front here. And it looks like Bomber may be feeling the pressure oh. here. Supply block cannot build additional units and unfortunately here for bomber he's making a couple of mistakes so should we say that mma is capitalizing on these small areas and he's going to siege up it's a very good position here for mma and a very yeah. difficult one here for bomber to break and it's interesting that he's actually prolonging the banshee production during all of this but and look his starport uh -oh. gets lifted up uh -oh. there's three vikings if he doesn't have a starport how the hell is he ever going to take air control back yeah and this is really how does he push into that location right now he actually has to be so cost inefficient as bomber yeah. to break this position and oh he, he keeps shelling away at this, this um, i mean this he's, starport. he's supply blocked again and the starport's getting attacked into he can't build additional air units and it feels like bomber's like dealing oh. with one problem at a time but not thinking about the next possible move that comes out from MMA and here comes a drop the last thing that Bomber wants to deal with because he's got these three tanks outside his main base and MMA just putting pressure on left and right here and Bomber is falling further and further behind in this game he has to push this back he has to stabilize and just not take damage he might have to wait until his plus one finishes here to try and gain any little advantage he can when pushing this away it's gonna finish up pretty soon uh, but he needs to keep that starport alive absolutely needs to stay alive otherwise he's gonna be too far behind yeah and uh, there is a tank here to protect that mineral line but bomber starting to defend a little bit here's gonna take a bit of a well actually didn't really lose any scvs there these tanks are still a problem it's the Vikings overall that are just providing yeah. such great positioning. And if he was to get some of his out himself, then maybe he can try and eat that out, but it's been under pressure a lot. Yeah. Look and, at the resources uh, lost as well. 1,000 resources difference between the both of them there. And uh, obviously a good start here for MMA. Still holding position around this area. He's got this barracks um, under his siege fire. Vikings, if these tanks were to move forward here for Bomber, he's going to start to get siege, and already we can see that. But he does have a lot of Marines, and then there's a good tank line from MMA. Yeah, I think plus, I mean, one, Bomber. plus one weapons just finished up during all of this, so he did push forward, but again, only got really got like uh, a few of the siege tanks cleaned them up yeah. in the end. That wasn't actually too bad of a break out there for Bomber, to be Very honest. Very good to clear it up. Yeah. But there's also another attack coming in, and the Vikings are still alive. While all this is going on, MMA's added on a bunch of barracks. He's got a lot of production, and it's not really a long-term game he's planning. Remember, the average game length is usually around the 15 minute mark mma is pushing and pushing and pushing not with his units but with his strategy back at home it's a lot of production it's a lot of unit production that he's just going to be able to smash through bomber must be careful here one of those big doom drops again could end the game yeah and breaking out of a two base location in general if mma opted for a, like a contained style on a map like this where you have to go down that small choke or try and drop elsewhere is really really irritating as he's looking for extra little spots Finds a blind spot here against him, but uh, it should be okay. Be spotted. Yeah, this should be okay to uh, to deal with. Yep, siege tanks there, ready and waiting. As upgrades are similar on these marines uh, for both of them, so does have to pull back there for a second. Yep, no uh, no value here uh, for MMA really. He's just kind of holding this position. Shouldn't be able to do anything. Lifts up and gets out after dropping the scan, realizing there's plenty of siege tanks there, and behind all of that, taking on extra. Engineering bay, but look at this. Actually, now pushing forward with a big, big size of medivacs, but it's probably mm. spotted by these marines on the coverage zones. Yeah, really very, nice. very well done here from a just uh, making sure that he sees any army movement whatsoever. That is one way to lose. If he didn't see this coming, that could drop in his main base and he'd be in a lot of trouble. So great scout there from MMA. Knows it way ahead of time and uh, is going to be more than ready to defend it. MMA had to supply drop then, I think, because he was supply blocked at 118 for a little while during that, so yeah. that did slow him down in production well, a little bit. 
you know, MMA in the last five minutes or so has, has taken his third command center. I didn't think he'd really push himself towards that, but he's got double engineering bay. He's got a better income. He's got better upgrades, and he's just now kind of set himself up much better for the next five to ten minutes, obviously, yeah. once all this completes and finishes up. It's actually Bomber, the player that needs to get damage done. If the third base is successfully mined from, if these upgrades complete, MMA would be in trouble. And what Bomber's going to try to do, he'll pressure the front here, and then look to drop in the main base. Exactly. MMA knows this. He knows that we're going to see a similar move like we saw on Foxtrot. Pressure, pull the army one way, and then look to drop it in another area. But of course, if MMA over defends in one area, Bomber can find a hole. And we've already seen MMA being able to adapt pretty well yeah. during this. So he's the Vikings are a big, big deal here for him to stop stop any kind of movement that will go on. He's actually going to push forwards here. Some of those siege tanks take a lot of fire before they even get set up. And unfortunately for Bomber, he loses a little bit of that. The siege tanks for M uh, MMA at the back aren't firing though, so he loses a little bit of firepower during that fight. Very good fight to take there for MMA. Saw the tanks at the front, snipe one yeah. or two, and took the rest of the fight there as uh, Bomber's Marines were behind that. And unfortunately, Bomber, who needs to deal damage, doesn't exactly have a very big army anymore. And he's bringing his reinforcements over, but MMA is the one with the supply lead. He doesn't have the army supply lead, but in a defensive position, that is better than having the larger army. Yeah, and he also got a lot of medevacs during that. He got like four or so medevacs during that, which means he, he yeah. needs to get extra medevacs oh. if he wants out. He's actually going to push forward, try and snipe out some of these siege tanks. He gets one for just a few Marines. That's a nice trade once again for MMA. Bomber is running out of time. He needs to do this in the next few minutes. If he doesn't, it's going to be MMA's game. This is so important for Bomber. He must attack soon. The plus two attack uh -oh. is, is almost done. This is this is huge. Bomber must go soon. And he finds some of the siege tanks on this side. And unfortunately, there was no more bio to be able to complement that, so that was yep. not too bad a trade there for Bomber, but still has to hold on against this Bioforce. He'll need ah. to push forwards. Plus two attack for the Marines is done, plus mm. one attack for the tanks is done. Bomber, he got a really good pick off of those tanks, but he's got to do more damage. MMA's mining from that third base. He's, he's got a lot of production. He's going to, Bomber, swing to the north. He might try pick up soon. He yeah. might try pick up soon, considering the positioning of this army. But oh. it looks like he wants to just go anyway, figuring that the siege tanks might be a little bit out of position, but it's not going to work out just yet, as these Marines have more firepower here for MMA. Pushing forward, big army supply advantage now. There you go, GG. Bomber, of course, no stranger to winning tournaments in America. He's picked up four of his six StarCraft II championships in America. Of course, would be looking to move forward towards claiming a fifth, but a difficult road is ahead. Of course, the winner of this will be playing in the semifinals tomorrow against either Classic or Hero, two very, very deadly Kesper Protoss players. But for now, it is all about this map here on Overgrowth, as we do see a, once again, these openings coming into shape. And I think in the end, it's it's going to be very interesting to see how Bomber plays out these, uh, this this next game, especially, but also the fifth if it goes to that. Because uh -huh. Bomber, it was so clear how confident he came into this series. He was saying, hundred percent, I am going to win." Yeah. Now he's on the back foot. How is he going to perform when his back is against the wall here against MMA, who has looked great these past two games? Bomber won the first one, and you know MMA did win those next two, showing a lot of strength and as mentioned composure. But here we do have, once again, the openings. We are going to see the factories coming in play again. The most popular build there is in Terran versus Terran. The faster factory to get the aggression rolling. If you can, you know, kind of overwhelm your opponent, you get a lead, you play the mid part of this matchup in a comfortable position. What we do see sometimes happen is both these players just kind of bounce off each other because they both went for the same build and neither of them really get a lead and we move on to the next part of the game. So once again, we're setting it up on this map where MMA gets closer and closer and closer to what he dreams of once again to be able to be on the BlizzCon stage in the final, to hold the trophy like it did a long time ago. This could be one step closer if he was to win this to get into the semifinals. But it is the Red Bull player who has mentioned has won three major tournaments recently, two Red Bull events, standing in his way, needs to win this one.
And yeah, you, as you say, MMA, that's all he ever talks about in our studios over in Cologne with WCS Europe. He loves the idea of BlizzCon. He loves the idea of performing well here. And right now he's doing it. All he has to do is take this one more game. Bomber was playing cautiously. He was looking around on the left-hand side, making sure yeah. nothing crazy was going on. Um, because he is up against it here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like we are going to see very similar to the previous game. The Widowmine, Medivac, and Marine drop coming out from MMA with the scout, with the Hellion here to figure out what his opponent's doing. He goes up and goes, all right. There's the Barracks Factory. He's kind of made a wall off to prevent any ground attack at the same time that could happen with a drop. It is a, a different Terran opening that could have happened here. But we are going to see, again, the Banshee from Bomber. Can MMA play out the start of this game like he did in the previous one? Because he did start to gain leads there, especially with the way that he controlled and kept the pressure on. There is the Medivac already going over to the other side of the map. There is a Widow Mine that's been built by Bomber. Going to be very good for defending against this type of play. Yeah. He's uh, able to uh, deploy that mine properly. MMA looking to try and push on the same kind of route that he went in game number three at the very, very yeah. beginning of it. But this Widow Mine, as you say. Remember, the Bomber's seen nothing in this game. He hasn't scouted. He's got no idea what he's playing against. And the Medivac is waiting. The Banshee in the middle of the map. Perfect play from MMA to wait, then to move in. Oh, tries to find this position, and a few, uh, an SCV here <laughs> actually goes into combat. Yep. The Marines were well positioned to deflect that, though. So at least that's a good start for Bomber. Um, the Viking yeah. does find this in the end. Remember, there is no cloak. So uh, this Banshee has only got a limited amount of time to do damage. Looks like he'll get a single SCV, and that's about it. So mm. not really worth it there for Bomber. He loses the Banshee immediately. Oh, dearie me. Yeah, he has a good idea. I mean, even with seeing this medevac anyway, he had a good idea of what was going on on the other side of the map. So did that Banshee really get much information if it didn't get yeah. that many kills? Not too much This is not good for Bomber Kolaris. He's no. got his natural contained for a little bit here. We already see MMA finishing up or getting close to finishing up that command center on natural. He's going to try and take another command center behind all of this, oh. but it has been spotted by MMA. He instantly yeah. sees that forces a cancel as well. Everything is just going MMA's way here in this series now. Yeah, this is this is not good here. He's getting a bit of damage done to that command center. He's got two Vikings in the mix as uh -oh. well that came out of nowhere, and he's holding this, and the command center's kind of stuck on it, the other side here. It's going to take a lot of damage. He yeah. can't lose it, obviously. There's a mine here to help, and it's going a to start lot burning. of damage is being dealt. SCVs are going to have to come repair this, you'd imagine. But it uh, looks like, no, he's Ooh. going to be able to get this to this right-hand side. And But it did start burning overall. I mean, that yeah. is actually quite costly to start yeah. repairing And Marines this. are still doing damage here. This is Jeez. not good. Oh, this is all spiraling out of control here for Bomber. He wants to break out of this container, yeah. certainly. The Siege Tank is going to help Ooh. out so much. Quick pick up there. As uh, the Medivac, with very little health, gets these units out of there. And Bomber, whew, by the skin of his teeth, holds on. But now tanks are here. But it looks like Bomber should be able to break out of this. Nice pressure in the early stages for MMA, and Bomber's got to be sweating in that booth right now because Ooh. his tournament life is on the line. He loses a Viking there, and oh dearie me. Once again, just like the previous game, Bomber starting to fall apart. This three Viking pressure that he's been using in the past game and now this game has worked wonders for him. I mean, it, it's almost a disastrous start there for Bomber. If he'd have, imagine yeah. if he'd have lost that command center, it would have just been so bad. But Imagine if MMA picks up eight Marines Ooh. and goes to the, to the main mineral line while yeah. this container is here. The pressure's there. He's, he's definitely got this chance to do something. Where does he try to go, though? He just keeps going. He's just going to keep uh, making units, rallying them forwards. It's a good position. He can go on the left-hand side of this mineral line. And because he has the Viking number, he has the air dominant advantage. Oh, this is not good here for Bomber. And he moves over with a winner mine. He's like, maybe oh. I'll defend this area that could get tanked. And well, too late. And uh, a position has been established by MMA and Bomber, not even mining from this expansion. Already a 20 supply difference between the both of them. What has really happened in this last two games here? MMA is reading this TVT so well. Bomber has just been up against it time and time again. And now, how are you supposed to deal with this? Yeah. If, unless he forgot about the idea yeah. of the Vikings and then stimmed and killed them, uh, yeah. that would be nice, but it's not going to happen. MMA is saying, I'm going to hold this position for as long as I can, and I'll make sure you do not counterattack. As we see, no units rallying through the middle. He's keeping everything at home yeah. to make sure that he keeps this lead. He knows he's got a lead. He knows that right now, he is the player that's Looking Ooh. at a semi-final, he's moved through, he's seen these units, and he kills off these units for free. That's is obviously very wonderful here. Yeah. Look at this bomber trying to take a no, huge oh, risk. The SCVs! Oh, he, the, he sees the third base. The SCVs Ooh. have to get out of there. There's no way he's oh, going to be able to take that. Three mules there. Oh. That is not what you want to happen. That is a lot of money that he's just thrown that will not 
show its return. Go back to the mineral lines, get back there quickly, because right now this, sea, uh, this command center is under pressure. You're not going to have any mining there for a long time. Yeah. MMA was able to sniff that out very quickly after seeing that ca potential oh. counterattack. One thing the bomber can Oof. do... Wait, he sh wait. No, no! no! MMA picks up a command center. That was not meant to happen. No way, no way. But one thing the bomber does have going in his favor, he has stim complete. Maybe if he can utilize this upgrade, 10 seconds, and then he'll have it. If he cleans up this force somehow, some way, then good. He can start to take control of the game again. But that was an absolutely disastrous, disastrous command center loss. I cannot believe what we just saw as that command center falls. And now at this position, I mean, he sees the army. He sees the extent of the army. Yep. There's still no Vikings really with this. And he can just poke forward, yep. get a few shots on the Raven, come back. And... Does not want to lose that Raven. Does Ooh. not want to lose that. He loses oh! the Raven as well. MMA is taking every small victory he can find. And Bomber crumbling. He's supply blocked. He's feeling this the pressure it. against the former BlizzCon champion. And MMA, who was not this favorite is to win this. No one thought he could win this, apparently. And he is turning this around. Bomber is in trouble. He's going for a counterattack. I don't even know if this is going to work. Where is he going? He's got to try and do something. He knows how much of a deficit he's at. MMA, though, he can have siege tanks. He's got Marines and uh, the siege tanks at the back, reinforcing, putting yeah. on pressure at the natural. He enforced the infrastructure to lift off. This is all spiraled way out of control. Stim's about to finish here for MMA as well. Yeah, it looks like he was going to get some damage done here, but SCV's going to come repairing oh. now. Stim's going to be completed for MMA. can start to deflect this. And to be honest, MMA is caught in a very difficult position right now. I mean, Bomber's caught Bomber, in a very yeah. difficult position position. He's got this happening on the, his side of the map. He's been pressured. His attack isn't really doing too much on the other side. And there's a big supply advantage here for the Ace of Terran. Right now, Vikings have won MMA this game. They've done so well for him. And he's pushing on forward. He's doing a lot of damage here. There's very little to Bomber's name right now as MMA is almost 40 supply up. It's going to be difficult. And 1-1 one, one just finished for the bio as well. Absolutely. And now MMA is going to buy himself some time. He'll walk over this army that is trying to pressure his natural and then will join four is to go for one final attack. It's going to take a miracle almost here for Bomber to pull this one back. It's going to be very difficult. He's establishing control in his natural, which means mm. he can mine, he can build, but a very tense situation. Oh, this command center, as MMA realizes, a little bit too late there. For two base mining to one base here, Bomber is starting to crawl back into yeah, this. Yeah. MMA still got an advantage. But not for much longer, the more that this is around. Yep, uh, has to be very, very careful about this. It's both players oh. being contained here. That siege tank on the high ground is good. There's not enough Vikings to be able to control every location in the end. Yep. As he should be able to do a little bit and then push this away. So as much as the Vikings were doing very well oh. for Bomber uh, MMA earlier on, Bomber's looking to push out and break out. Yeah, Bomber sees his opponent's army moving to the left-hand side, as we can see. So he's going to go chase and see what he can find. Well, he does keep the contain on. So this position, not as bad as I first thought it could be here for Bomber. And he's going to pick up this tank and just not lose it here to that uh, siege tank. He repositions. And he's chasing that army. He's expecting it to be on that left cell Naga Tower. So he's got to be careful not to get a sandwich here. Ooh. Bomber's about to take a fight, but he doesn't really know where that other army is currently. MMA simmed in, realizing that a lot of his army probably wasn't here because of the reinforcement point, killing off a there lot of that. There it is. There oh. it is. It's coming from the left-hand side here. And MMA joining his forces together in the center. And he has to get them all over there at the same time that a lot of Marines were lost there for MMA. Bomber trying to bring himself back in, gets the siege tank on the retreat out. But again, those Marines reinforcing for MMA. He still has army advantage yeah. and work. Try to drop the back of Bomber's base to see if he can pull his opponent down, find some weaknesses. And the game moves on here. Looks like Bomber's also picked up a medivac full of units. Oh, no. Oh. Multiple oh. medivacs full of units. And there are a lot of Marines here. Uh oh If he stims and pushes into those as he sees them, if he reacts in time and does damage to those medivacs... Oh, my gosh. He's going to spot uh -oh. it. He spots it. He's going to set up a trap. This could be something. Oh! He's he loses one on the retreat out there. One, another one takes damage, but that was a big army spot. And he's got no army to be able to deal with this drop. MMA is doing very, very well here right now. And now the supply advantage just opened itself up even more in favor of MMA. He's going to boost his way out of this main base while moving forward with his force. And Bomber lost two medivacs full of units. It seems like that's been a common occurrence for him during this year in WCS. And as we can see, the, the, the stance, the defensive stance from Bomber as he tries mm. to hold on. His MMA pounces forward. He's got a third base behind all of this. He could cross the T on that left-hand side as well whilst doing this drop on the middle and actually killing off all those Marines and then pushing on forwards. If he pushes into those three oh. Cs, he even gets one of the siege tanks as well. He's got a good position on Bomber right now. Yeah. Bomber's force on this right-hand side. 
absolutely is he just going for the counter right now mma scans he sees it's open yeah he gets a free siege tank on the push through here the siege tanks are well divided on the right hand side here for bomber but at the same time these marines are just going uncontested doing whatever they want bomber won the first game of this series but mma started to turn this around with winning two games in a row scv has been pulled off to help deal with this he's losing a couple there but he is going to clear up this in the main base but the third base of mma he's mining more he's able to build more and this is a problem mma is going to join his forces together bomber trying to also find position 95 army supply to bomber but 102 here for mma not that big of a difference so position is important MMA does not know this army's here. And if he gets his army caught around mm. here, MMA's in a weak position, but Bomber is gonna go for it. Oh my God, both this players is, are gonna go for each other. This is an opportunity, well, it's an opportunity for Bomber to try and get himself back into this. He's on his opponent's doorstep. Likewise though, MMA is at the front, stimming forwards, looking to do some damage. That siege tank is not sieged up. It really needs to be sieged up to be able to hold against this. He's gonna go straight in there. One siege tank for free pops out at the MMA's wrong time. MMA's broken the main base first, whereas Bomber's only on the natural. This is bad. Bomber, he's going to start to lose a lot here, whereas MMA uh -oh. is holding here. Uh -oh. oh, well, that's a lot of Marines, actually. The march up of the ramp, trying to do some damage. That siege tank at the back gets taken down here by Bomber, trying to do as much damage as he can do. He killed off a lot of SCVs, but MMA has set up in his opponent's base. Bomber is flying away, trying to get out of there and just go straight for the base trade. Oh, my God, what is happening here? This game has gone absolutely berserk. There's buildings floating everywhere. There's not much here for him. There's nothing here for MMA to defend oh. his main base. Likewise, there's nothing to defend this. But overall, when two Two armies collide. It looks like MMA is going to be stronger with these tanks. The tanks are going to deal a lot of damage. What a berserk game this is. Yeah, Bomber just trying to claw at any opportunity he can here, whilst MMA have the traction behind his army. He's doing a lot of damage to his infrastructure. I mean, He's pretty much non-existent now. The difference in the armies is almost non-existent, but these two engineering oh. bays, it looks like the Marines are coming to deal with them. Yeah. Obviously, with 2-2 completed, that's huge, but the armies are so incredibly similar. There's a three tank difference for MMA, but a 10 marine advantage for Bomber. There are SCVs in the mix that do come into play, but position is everything. The defending player who set up with siege tanks is going to win. A lot of marines here. There's a 10 marine advantage pretty much. So yeah. MMA's army in the middle of the map is stronger. There are three marines up here for MMA. He's looking to just find any of this production facility on the right-hand side. He has a, technically a yeah. few minerals that he could eke out some extra well, SCV, uh, Marines with, even. Both players have escaped with a command mm. center here. The barracks are being cleaned up. And there's a, a big stim. There's a lot of medivacs there as well to, to keep in consideration, too. He's got to be very careful for now. This is a tense situation. Yeah, lots it's of medivacs for both players. Bomber comes back up to this high ground. MMA, he's still not supply blocked, so he can oh. make more Marines here, and he's going to be able to defend it. He's found a position where yeah. he can defend he's, this production. Uh oh, uh oh. He's going to go. He might actually no, go. Ooh. No, he's not. Oh, Bomber's going from both angles here with those Marines trying to do some damage where he can. And those siege tanks at the back are doing a lot here for Bomber. But, but MMA, MMA, he's able to eke it out. He gets on top of the siege tanks. GG. Opening up as we've described throughout the series with the gas first, which leads to the faster factory, which leads to the earlier aggression. Neither of them want to try to play defensive in the start of this game. Trying to play defensive on this type of map can be very difficult to actually succeed with. Yeah. So they're saying, you know what, I don't care. If you play defensive, I'm gonna break you with my aggression. If both players play aggressive, this can become tricky. Some aggressive builds do have slight favorisms over the other ones, so We'll see where they go with this, exactly. Yeah, good map for Reapers overall. There's a lot of base uh, area to jump into your main base, uh, namely up to the top here, uh, if you're, we're talking about Bomber, because this ledge is so yeah. wide. Very hard to cover yeah. all of that area. Despite opening up gas first here, there, there is one build that kind of skews off to be defensive despite opening up aggressive, and that's the fast Raven opening. Mm. Because Banshees are so common on a map like this, and you can, you've got a lot of airspace to play with and a lot of room, you do often see players go blind Banshee, just straight off the bat Banshee. It's a weak style or, or a little bit weak against really fast expansion builds unless you utilize the Raven to be aggressive, but very good against an opponent who opens up either Widow Mine or Banshee play. So does one of these players decide to potentially counter one of the more popular builds in that Cloak Banshee mm -hmm. with a fast Raven? So 
these are things to keep in consideration right away. But also, you've got to consider the fact that you, we, you technically could see both players do that, because Ravens have a lot of utility later on, transitioning from dealing absolutely, with the Banshee. Absolutely, absolutely they do. And Bomber with taking a second gas is the first player to really push himself towards that type of opening. So the two major options for Bomber, either the Banshee or the Raven. He's shown us that he does like to open up for a Banshee without Cloak, and then to the Raven, which is a little bit of aggression, making sure you're defensive enough in case there's another Banshee from your opponent. So we'll see. Whereas MMA has opened up with what we call a 1-1-1. It's Barracks, Factory, and Starport, but all of a single gas. This is actually, depending on if it's a Banshee or not, pretty good against what we're seeing from Bomber. The Marines and the Hellions that attack at such a fast speed that you're not really ready to deal with this, especially if you're going for a Raven here. So we should be seeing a Medivac. We are going to see MMA play aggressive. Is this Banshee or is this Raven? Okay, it's ah. going to be Banshee, but in, the Banshee is good, but there's only one of them, and there's going to be a lot of Marines of mine uh, and the Medivac lifting the units around. I really feel that MMA could find himself in an early game lead here if this attack is successful, because Bomber would almost need to switch around to be the defending player against this. Yeah, you see a lot of uh, good Widowmine placements on this map, say at the top of ramps or right in the middle of them to try and catch off some units as they're transitioning on. But the Medivac's already on the way well, look here. Look how fast it is. It's, it's incredibly fast. Yeah, it's very, very scary here for Bomber, who right now doesn't have too much information yeah. about this at all. Well, he does have, you know, six, seven Marines and a Banshee. Depends on where the Banshee will be. The Widowmine has been spotted. Now MMA knows what he's up against. He's got to also mentally prepare back at home for a Banshee. As good as aggression he could do, if a Cloak Banshee's in his mineral and he loses his SUV, yep. it's simple, but here we go. MMA, Medivac swings around. There's a mine, there's Marines. How much damage can he get done? There's a late response there from Bomber. And he's got to be careful because that mine is zoning out a little oh. bit of this. He's going to try and bring down oh. the mine. He actually gets that. That's a really nice pick up there for MMA to start things off in this game. And now the mine is protecting his Marines yeah. here. The Banshee or Marines move forward. Obviously, you can move back here, but it looks like this mm. is going to be pushed back. SEVs are coming off the line. They're taking a lot of damage. Great it's... pick up there, by the way. He tried to detonate the mine with the SEV. Yeah. Kind of greedy uh, Marine positioning overall. He lost a few of them because they weren't yeah. being covered by that mine, but in the end, didn't do too bad. Got that Widow mine himself. Yeah. Uh, and shut that down, so... And the Hellion's oh. gonna head on in. There's a couple of weaker uh, workers, potentially. He's gonna get one of them easily here on this uh, command center, by the looks of it. Yeah. Uh, which is a nice pickup. Three. Any little thing you can get. Three SCV kills, seven supply lead, and it looks like he's dealt with the Banshee. He's got a lot of Marines and Vikings, one scan which he should have because he knew this was coming. Yeah, he should have been able to save that. He was adding on the missile oh, turret as a response. the Banshee's out, the Banshee's out. Yeah, it's gonna get away. Oof. On the edge. <laughs> very, very close. Living life on the edge, as you say. Oh, he almost went back in there. Oh, here comes the widow mine again. Um, can that really detonate on too much? It's just slightly out of range. Yeah, but if the Marines come in, the mine blows up on the Marines, and then the single yeah. Marine of MMA is left. But he is going to get out. Doesn't want to take too many risks. Wants to keep these units alive. Banshee dies, Ooh, but then... That's not got a lot of energy on it, so the Vikings mm. will chase. And uh, can get maybe one or two of volleys off on this uh, as it gets out of range. So, has to be very, very careful about that control. The stop micro here. Oh, uh, it's and gone. Gets it. Nice. Really, really nice control there by MMA. And he takes a bit of a lead in this game because he's the player still with aggressive options in this medivac. It's not a lot of aggression, but it still can threaten, right? And then he's also going to start to expand a little bit faster here. And overall... Oh! That was actually a uh, really good control there by uh, Bomber, who sent that SCV forwards. And likewise, MMA could have redirected that Widow Mine, but yep. uh, didn't in the end. He was probably doing something else on the other side of the map. Lots of aggressive play. Um, looks like MMA does take a small lead here. Not a big lead, but a small lead. Um, we are going to see the expansion taken a little bit faster here for Bomber, so we will start to catch up here. But overall, both players with their own type of builds kind of bouncing off each other. But these three Vikings, definitely going to present a threat to that Raven, obviously, unless there is a a bit of support here by these Marines, these air units will dominate. Yeah, and overall I'm liking oh, what was, ooh. It's an expensive unit, that's 200 gas for a Raven. Yeah, and this is a really good pick off there by MMA, and he might even get the Banshee, ooh, drops a scan to actually try and kill this off. If he kills this off on the other side, which he is going to, Absolutely brilliant, brilliant there from MMA. To think that those three Ravens were used defensively against the Banshees that got turned aggressive, picked off a Raven and a, and a Banshee. That's a lot of damage from these units, which are just meant to be defensive. Yeah.
Very, very well done. Very well done overall. And dropping the scan, killing off uh, the Widow Mine in the end by the looks of things that was blocking that. But overall now, MMA looking to be on the aggressive himself. It's going to be like the, the tank bio play from both of these guys again going forwards. Um, but MMA is trying to be very, very aggressive by his well, positioning. Well, the, these three Vikings are so important in this game. He has air control. He's yeah. got a medivac. He's got three tanks of his own. And he's going to start to push this front here. And it looks like Bomber may be feeling the pressure oh. here. Supply block cannot build additional units. And unfortunately here for Bomber, he's making a couple of mistakes. Or should we say that MMA is capitalizing on these small areas? And he's going to siege up. It's a very good position here for MMA. And a very yeah. difficult one here for Bomber to break. And it's interesting that he's actually prolonging the Banshee production during all of this. But and look, his starport uh -oh. gets lifted up. Uh -oh. There's three Vikings. If he doesn't have a starport, how the hell is he ever going to take air control back? Yeah, and this is really... How does he push into that location right now? He actually has to be so cost inefficient as Bomber yeah. to break this position. And oh, he, he keeps shelling away at this, this, um, I mean, this starport. I mean, he's supply blocked again, and the starport's getting attacked into. He can't build additional air units. And it feels like Bomber's like dealing oh. with one problem at a time, but not thinking about the next possible move that comes out from MMA and here comes a drop the last thing that Bomber wants to deal with because he's got these three tanks outside his main base and MMA just putting pressure on left and right here and Bomber is falling further and further behind in this game he has to push this back he has to stabilize and just not take damage he might have, wait, have to wait until his plus one finishes here to try and gain any little advantage he can when pushing this away it's gonna finish up pretty soon uh, but he needs to keep that starport alive absolutely needs to stay alive otherwise it's gonna be too far behind yeah and uh, there is a tank here to protect that mineral line, but Bomber starting to defend a little bit here is going to take a bit of a... Well, actually didn't really lose any SCVs there. These tanks are still a problem. It's the Vikings overall that are just providing yeah. such great positioning. And if he was to get some of his out himself, then maybe he can try and eat that out, but it's been under pressure a lot. Yeah. Look at the resources uh. lost as well. 1,000 resources difference between the both of them there. And uh, obviously a good start here for MMA. Still holding position around this area. He's got this barracks um, under his siege fire. Vikings, if these tanks were to move forward here for Bomber, he's going to start to get siege. And already we can see that. But he does have a lot of Marines. And then there's a good tank line from MMA. Yeah, I think plus, I mean, one, Bomber. plus one weapons just finished up during all of this. So he did push forward. But again, only got really got like uh, a few of the siege tanks cleaned them up yeah. in the end. That wasn't actually too bad of a break out there for Bomber, to be Very honest. Very good to clear it up. Yeah. But there's also another attack coming in. And the Vikings are still alive. While all this is going on, MMA's added on a bunch of barracks. He's got a lot of production. And it's not really a long-term game he's planning. Remember, the average game length is usually around the 15 minute mark MMA is pushing and pushing and pushing not with his units but with his strategy back at home it's a lot of production it's a lot of unit production that he's just going to be able to smash through Bomber must be careful here one of those big doom drops again could end the game. Yeah, and breaking out of a two base location in general, if MMA opted for a, like a contained style on a map like this, where you have to go down that small choke or try and drop elsewhere, is really, really irritating as he's looking for extra little spots. Finds a blind spot here against him, but uh, it'll be okay. be spotted. Yeah, this should be okay to, uh, to deal with. Yep, siege tanks there, ready and waiting. As upgrades are similar on these Marines uh, for both of them, so does have to pull back there for a second. Yep, no, uh, no value here uh, for MMA, really. He's just kind of holding this position. Shouldn't be able to do anything. Lifts up and gets out after dropping the scan, realizing there's plenty of siege tanks there, and behind all of that, taking on extra engineering bay. But look at this. Ashley now pushing forward with a big, big size of medivacs, but it's probably mm. been spotted by these Marines on the coverage zones. Yeah, really very, nice. very well done here for MMA. Just uh, making sure that he sees any army movement whatsoever. That is one way to lose. If he didn't see this coming, that could drop in his main base and he'd be in a lot of trouble. So great scout there from MMA. Knows it way ahead of time and uh, is going to be more than ready to defend it. MMA had to supply drop then, I think, because he was supply blocked at 118 for a little while during that. So yeah. that did slow him down in production well, a little bit. You know, MMA in the last five minutes or so has is, is taken his third command center. I didn't think he'd really push himself towards that, but he's got double engineering bay. He's got a better income. He's got better upgrades, and he's just now kind of set himself up much better for the next five to ten minutes, obviously, yeah. once all this completes and finishes up. It's actually Bomber, the player that needs to get damage done. If the third base is successfully mined from, if these upgrades complete, MMA would be in trouble. And what Bomber's going to try to do, he'll pressure the front here and then look to drop in the main base. Exactly. MMA knows this. He knows that we're going to see a similar move like we saw on Foxtrot. Pressure, pull the army one way, and then look to drop it in another area. 
But of course, if MMA over defends in one area, Bomber can find a hole. And we've already seen MMA being able to adapt pretty well yeah. during this. So he's the Vikings are a big, big deal here for him to stop, stop any kind of movement that will go on. He's actually going to push forward here. And some of those siege tanks take a lot of fire before they even get set up. And unfortunately for Bomber, he loses a little bit of that. The siege tanks for M uh, MMA at the back aren't firing though, so he loses a little bit of firepower during that fight. Very good fight to take there for MMA. Saw the tanks at the front, snipe one yeah. or two, and took the rest of the fight there as uh, Bomber's Marines were behind that. And unfortunately, Bomber, who needs to deal damage, doesn't exactly have a very big army anymore. And he's bringing his reinforcements over, but MMA is the one with the supply lead. He doesn't have the army supply lead, but in a defensive position, that is better than having the larger army. Yeah. And he also got a lot of medevacs during that. He got like four or so medevacs during that, which means he, he yeah. needs to get extra medevacs oh. if he wants out. He's actually going to push forward, try and snipe out some of these siege tanks. He gets one for just a few Marines. That's a nice trade once again for MMA. Bomber is running out of time. He needs to do this in the next few minutes. If he doesn't, it's going to be MMA's game. This is so important for Bomber. He must attack soon. The plus two attack uh -oh. is, is almost done. This is this is huge. Bomber must go soon. And he finds some of the siege tanks on this side. And unfortunately, there was no more bio to be able to complement that. So that was so yep. not too bad a trade there for Bomber, but still has to hold on against this Biofoss. He'll need to <sighs> push forwards. Plus two attack for the Marines is done. Plus mm. one attack for the tanks is done. Bomber, he got a really good pick off with those tanks, but he's got to do more damage. MMA's mining from that third base. He's, he's got a lot of production. He's going to, Bomber, swing to the north. He might try pick up soon. He yeah. might try pick up soon, considering the positioning of this army. But oh. it looks like he wants to just go anyway, figuring that the siege tanks might be a little bit out of position, but it's not going to work out just yet, as these Marines have more firepower here for MMA. Pushing forward, big army supply advantage now. There you go, GG. Bomber, of course, no stranger to winning tournaments in America. He's picked up four of his six StarCraft II championships in America. Of course, would be looking to move forward towards claiming a fifth, but a difficult road is ahead. Of course, the winner of this will be playing in the semifinals tomorrow against either Classic or Hero, two very, very deadly Kesper Protoss players. But for now, it is all about this map here on Overgrowth, as we do see a, once again, these openings coming into shape. And I think in the end, it's it's going to be very interesting to see how Bomber plays out these, uh, this this next game especially, but also the fifth if it goes to that, because uh -huh. Bomber, it was so clear how confident he came into this series. He was saying, 100%, I am going to win. Yep. Now he's on the back foot. How is he going to perform when his back is against the wall here against MMA, who has looked great these past two games? Bomber won the first one, and you know MMA did win those next two, showing a lot of strength and has mentioned composure. But here we do have, once again, the openings. We are going to see the factories coming in play again. The most popular build there is in Terran versus Terran. The faster factory to get the aggression rolling. If you can, you know, kind of overwhelm your opponent, you get a lead, you play the mid part of this matchup in a comfortable position. What we do see sometimes happen is both these players just kind of bounce off each other because they both went for the same build, and neither of them really get a lead, and we move on to the next part of the game. So once again, we're setting it up on this map where MMA gets closer and closer and closer to what he dreams of once again to be able to be on the BlizzCon stage in the final, to hold the trophy like it did a long time ago, this could be one step closer if he was to win this to get into the semifinals. But it is the Red Bull player who has mentioned has won three major tournaments recently, two Red Bull events, standing in his way, needs to win this one. And yeah, you, as you say, MMA, that's all he ever talks about in our studios over in Cologne with WCS Europe. He loves the idea of BlizzCon. He loves the idea of performing well here. And right now he's doing it. All he has to do is take this one more game. Bomber was playing cautiously. He was looking around on the left-hand side, making sure yeah. nothing crazy was going on. Um, because he is up against it here. Mm -hmm. mm, it looks like we are going to see very similar to the previous game. The Widowmine, Medivac, and Marine drop coming out from MMA with the scout, with the Hellion here to figure out what his opponent's doing. He goes up and goes, all right, there's the Barracks Factory. He's kind of made a wall off to prevent any ground attack at the same time that could happen with a drop. It is a, a different Terran opening that could have happened here. But we are going to see, again, the Banshee from Bomber. Can MMA play out the start of this game like he did in the previous one because he did start to gain leads there, especially with the way that he controlled and kept the pressure on. 
And there is the Medivac already going over to the other side of the map. There is a Widow Mine that's been built by Bomber. Going to be very good for defending against this type of play. Yeah. He's uh, able to uh, deploy that mine properly. MMA are looking to try and push on the same kind of route they went in game number three at the very, very yeah. beginning of it. But this Widow Mine, as you say. Remember that Bomber's seen nothing in this game. He hasn't scouted, mm. he's got no idea what he's playing against. And the Medivac is waiting. The Banshee in the middle of the map. Perfect play from MMA to wait, then to move in. Oh, tries to find this position, and a few, uh, an SCV here <laughs> actually goes into combat. Yep. The Marines were well positioned to deflect that, though. So at least that's a good start for Bomber. Um, the Viking does yeah. find this in the end. Remember, there is no cloak, so uh, this Banshee has only got a limited amount of time to do damage. Looks like he'll get a single SCV, and that's about it. So mm. not really worth it there for Bomber. He loses the Banshee immediately. Oh, dearie me. Yeah, he has a good idea. I mean, even with seeing this medevac anyway, he had a good idea of what was going on on the other side of the map. So did that Banshee really get much information if it didn't get yeah. that many kills? Not too much This at all. is not good for Bomber Kolaris. He's no. got his natural contained for a little bit here. We already see MMA finishing up or getting close to finishing up that command center on natural. He's going to try and take another command center behind all of this, oh. but it has been spotted by MMA. He instantly yeah. sees that forces a cancel as well. Everything is just going MMA's way here in this series now. Yeah, this is this is not good here. He's getting a bit of damage done to that command center. He's got two Vikings in the mix as uh -oh. well that came out of nowhere, and he's holding this, and the command center's kind of stuck on it, the other side here. It's going to take a lot of damage. He yeah. can't lose it, obviously. There's a mine here to help, and it's going a to start lot burning. of damage is being dealt. SCVs are going to have to come repair this, you'd imagine. But uh, it looks like, no, Ooh. he's going to be able to get this to this right-hand side. And But it did start burning overall. I mean, that yeah. is actually quite costly to start yeah, repairing And Marines this. are still doing damage here. This is Jeez. not good. Oh, this is all spiraling out of control here for Bomber. He wants to break out of this container, yeah. certainly. The Siege Tank is going to help Ooh. out so much. Quick pick up there. As uh, the Medivac, with very little health, gets these units out of there. And Bomber, whew, by the skin of his teeth, holds up. But now tanks are here. But it looks like Bomber should be able to break out of this. Nice pressure in the early stages for MMA. And Bomber's got to be sweating in that booth right now because Ooh. his tournament life is on the line. He loses a Viking there. And oh dearie me. Once again, just like the previous game, Bomber starting to fall apart. This three Viking pressure that he's been using in the past game and now with this game has worked wonders for him. I mean, it, it's almost a disastrous start there for Bomber. If he'd have, imagine yeah. if he'd have lost that command center, it would have just been so bad. But Imagine if MMA picks up eight Marines Ooh. and goes to the ne to the main mineral line while yeah. this container is here. The pressure's there. He's, he's definitely got this chance to do something. Where does he try to go, though? He just keeps going. He's just going to keep uh, making units, rallying them forwards. It's a good position. He can go on the left-hand side of this mineral line, and because he has the Viking number, he has the air dominant advantage. Oh, this is not good here for Bomber, and he moves over with a winner mine. He's like, maybe oh. I'll defend this area that could get tanked. And, well, too late. Uh, as a position has been established by MMA and Bomber, not even mining from this expansion. Already a 20 supply difference between the both of them. What has really happened in this last two games here? MMA is reading this TVT so well. Bomber has just been up against it time and time again. And now, how are you supposed to deal with this? Yeah. If, unless he forgot about the idea yeah. of the Vikings and then stimmed and killed them, uh, yeah. that would be nice, but it's not going to happen. MMA is saying, I'm going to hold this position for as long as I can, and I'll make sure you do not counterattack. As we see, no units rallying through the middle. He's keeping everything at home yeah. to make sure that he keeps this lead. He knows he's got a lead. He knows that right now, he is the player that's Looking Ooh. at a semi-final, he's moved through, he's seen these units, and he kills off these units for free. That's is obviously very wonderful here. Yeah. Look at this, Bomber trying to take no, a huge the risk. The SCVs! Uh, he, the, he sees the third base, the SCVs Ooh. have to get out of there. There's no way he's oh, going to be able to take that. three mules there! Oh. That is not what you want to happen. That is a lot of money that he's just thrown that will not show its return. Go back to the mineral lines, get back there quickly, because right now this sea, uh, this command center is under pressure. You're not going to have any mining there for a long time. Yeah. MMA was able to sniff that out very quickly after seeing that ca potential oh. counterattack. One thing a bomber Ooh. can do... Wait, he sh wait. No, no! no! MMA picks up a command center. That was not meant to happen. No way, no way. But one thing that Bomber does have going in his favor, he has stim complete. Maybe if he can utilize this upgrade, 10 seconds, and then he'll have it. If he cleans up this force somehow, some way, then good. He can start to take control of the game again. But that was an absolutely disastrous, disastrous command center loss. I cannot believe what we just saw as that command center falls. And now at this position, I mean, he sees the army. He sees the extent of the army. Yep. There's still no Vikings really with this. And he can just poke forward, yep. get a few shots on the Raven, come back. And... Does not want to lose that Raven. Does Ooh. not want to lose that. He loses oh! the Raven as well. 
all. MMA is taking every small victory he can find, and Bomber crumbling. He's supply blocked. He's feeling this the pressure it. against the former BlizzCon champion. And MMA, who was not this favorite to win this, no one thought he could win this apparently, and he is turning this around. Bomber is in trouble. He's going for a counter attack. I don't even know if this is going to work. Where is he going? He's got to try and do something. He knows how much of a deficit he's at. MMA though, he can have siege tanks. He's got Marines and uh, the siege tanks at the back, reinforcing, putting yep. on pressure at the natural. He enforced the infrastructure to lift off. This is all spiraled way out of control. Stim's about to finish here for MMA as well. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get some damage done here, but SCV's going to come repairing oh. now. Stim's going to be completed for MMA. He can start to deflect this. And to be honest, MMA is caught in a very difficult position right now. I mean, Bomber's caught Bomber, in a very yeah. difficult position. He's got this happening on the, his side of the map. He's been pressured. His attack isn't really doing too much on the other side. And there's a big supply advantage here for the Ace of Terran. Right now, Vikings have won MMA this game. They've done so well for him. And he's pushing on forwards. He's doing a lot of damage here. There's very little to Bomber's name right now. As MMA is almost 40 supply up. It's going to be difficult. And 1-1 one, one just finished for the bio as well. Absolutely. And now MMA is going to buy himself some time. He'll walk over this army that is trying to pressure his natural. And then will join forces to go for one final attack. It's going to take a miracle almost here for Bomber to pull this one back. It's going to be very difficult. He's establishing control in his natural, which means mm. he can mine, he can build. But a very tense situation. Oh, this command center, as MMA realizes, a little bit too late there. For two base mining to one base here, Bomber is starting to crawl back into yeah, this. Yeah. MMA still got an advantage, but not for much longer, the more that this is around. Yep, uh, has to be very, very careful about this. It's both players Whoa. being contained here. That siege tank on the high ground is good. There's not enough Vikings to be able to control every location in the end. Yep. As he should be able to do a little bit and then push this away. So as much as the Vikings were doing very well Whoa. for Bomber uh, MMA earlier on, Bomber's looking to push out and break out. Yeah, Bomber sees his opponent's army moving to the left-hand side, as we can see. So he's going to go chase and see what he can find. Well, he does keep the contain on. So this position, not as bad as I first thought it could be here for Bomber. And he's going to pick up this tank and just not lose it here to that uh, siege tank. He repositions, and he's chasing that army. He's expecting it to be on that left cell Naga Tower. She's got to be careful not to get a sandwich here. Ooh. Bomber's about to take a fight, but he doesn't really know where that other army is currently. MMA Sim didn't realizing that a lot of his army probably wasn't here because of the reinforcement point, killing off a there lot of that. There it is. There oh. it is. He's coming from the left-hand side here. And MMA joining his forces together in the center. And he has to get them all over there at the same time that a lot of Marines were lost there for MMA. Bomber trying to bring himself back in, gets the siege tank on the retreat out. But again, those Marines reinforcing for MMA. He still has army advantage yeah. and work. Try to drop the back of Bomber's base to see if he can pull his opponent down, find some weaknesses, and the game moves on here. Looks like Bomber's also picked up a medivac full of units. Oh, no. Oh. Multiple oh. medivacs full of units. And there are a lot of Marines here. Uh-oh. If he stims and pushes into those as he sees them, if he reacts in time and does damage to those medivacs... Oh, my gosh. He's going to spot uh -oh. it. He spots it. He's going to set up a trap. This could be something. Oh! Oh! He's going to lose a few medivacs. He loses one on the retreat out there. Well, another one takes damage, but that was a big army spot. And he's got no army to be able to deal with this drop. MMA is doing very, very well here right now. And now the supply advantage just opened itself up even more in favor of MMA. He's going to boost his way out of this main base while moving forward with his force. And Bomber lost two medivacs full of units. It seems like that's been a common occurrence for him during this year in WCS. And as we can see, the, the, the stance, the defensive stance from Bomber, as he tries to mm. hold on, as MMA pounces forward, he's got a third base behind all of this. He could cross the T on that left-hand side as well, whilst doing this drop on the middle, and actually killing off all those Marines, and then pushing on forwards. If he pushes into those three oh. Cs, he even gets one of the siege tanks as well! He's got a good position on Bomber right now. Yeah. Bomber's force on this right-hand side. Absolutely. Is he just going for the Manic counter? right now. MMA scans, Whoa. he sees it's open. Yeah, he gets a free siege tank on the push through here. The siege tanks are well divided on the right hand side here for Bomber, but at the same time, these Marines are just going uncontested, doing whatever they want. Bomber won the first game of this series, but MMA started to turn this around with winning two games in a row. SCV's been pulled off to help deal with this. He's losing a couple there, but he is going to clear up this in the main base. But the third base of MMA, he's mining more, he's able to build more, and this is a problem. MMA is going to join his forces together. Bomber trying to also find position. 95 army supply to Bomber, but 102 here for MMA. Not that big of a difference, so position is important. MMA does not know this army's here. And if he gets his army caught around mm. here, MMA's in a weak position, but Bomber 
is going to go for it. Oh my god, both this players is, are going to go for each other. This is an opportunity. Well, it's an opportunity for Bomber to try and get himself back into this. He's on his opponent's doorstep. Likewise, though, MMA is at the front, stimming forwards, looking to do some damage. That siege tank is not sieged up. It really needs to be sieged up to be able to hold against this. He's going to go straight in there. One siege tank for free pops out at the MMA's wrong time. MMA's broken the main base first, whereas Bomber's only on the natural. This is bad for Bomber. He's going to start to lose a lot here, whereas MMA is uh -oh. holding here. Uh -oh. Oh, well, that's a lot of Marines, actually. The march up of the ramp, trying to do some damage. That siege tank at the back gets taken down here by Bomber, trying to do as much damage as he can do. He killed off a lot of SCVs, but MMA has set up in his opponent's base. Bomber is flying away, trying to get out of there and just go straight for the base trade. Oh my god, what is happening here? This game has gone absolutely berserk. There's buildings floating everywhere. There's not much here for him. There's nothing here for MMA to defend oh. his main base. Likewise, there's nothing to defend this. But overall, when two armies collide, it looks like MMA is going to be stronger with these tanks. The tanks are going to deal a lot of damage. What a berserk game this is. Yeah, Bomber just trying to claw at any opportunity he can here, whilst MMA have the traction behind his army. He's doing a lot of damage to his infrastructure. I mean, He's pretty much non-existent now. The difference in the armies is almost non-existent, but these two engineering oh. bays, it looks like the Marines are coming to deal with them. Yeah. Obviously, with 2-2 two, two completed, that's huge, but the armies are so incredibly similar. There's a three-tank difference for MMA, but a 10-Marine advantage for Bomber. There are SCVs in the mix that do come into play, but position is everything. The defending player who's set up with siege tanks is going to win. A lot of Marines here. There's a 10 Marine advantage, pretty much. So yeah. MMA's army in the middle of the map is stronger. There are three Marines up here for MMA. He's looking to just find any of this production facility on the right-hand side. He has a, technically a yeah. few minerals that he could eke out some extra well, SCV, uh, Marines with, even. Both players have escaped with a command mm. center here. The barracks are being cleaned up. There's a, a big stim. There's a lot of medivacs there as well to, to keep in consideration, too. He's got to be very careful for now. This is a tense situation. Yeah, lots it's of medivacs for both players. Bomber comes back up to this high ground. MMA, he's still not supply blocked, so he no. can make more Marines here, and he's going to be able to defend it. He's found a position where yeah. he can defend is this production. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He's going to go. He might actually no, go. Ooh. No, he's not. Oh, Bomber's coming in from both angles here with those Marines, trying to do some damage where he can. And those siege tanks at the back are doing a lot here for Bomber. But, but MMA, MMA, he's able to eat it out. He gets on top of the siege tanks. GG! Bomber, of course, no stranger to winning tournaments. In America, he's picked up four of his six StarCraft II championships in America. Of course, would be looking to move forward towards claiming a fifth, but a difficult road is ahead. Of course, the winner of this will be playing in the semifinals tomorrow against either Classic or Hero, two very, very deadly Kesper Protoss players. But for now, it is all about this map here on Overgrowth, as we do see a... Once again, these openings coming into shape. And I think in the end, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how Bomber plays out these, uh, this, this next game especially, but also the fifth if it goes to that, because uh -huh. Bomber, it was so clear how confident he came into this series. He was saying, 100%, I am going to win. Yeah. Now he's on the back foot. How is he going to perform when his back is against the wall here against MMA, who has looked great these past two games? Bomber won the first one, and you know MMA did win those next two, showing a lot of strength and, as mentioned, composure. But here we do have, once again, the openings. We are going to see the factories coming in play again. The most popular build there is in Terran versus Terran, the faster factory to get the aggression rolling. If you can, you know, kind of overwhelm your opponent, you get a lead, you play the mid part of this matchup in a comfortable position. What we do see sometimes happen is both these players just kind of bounce off each other because they both went for the same build and neither of them really get a lead and we move on to the next part of the game. So once again, we're setting it up on this map where MMA gets closer and closer and closer to what he dreams of once again to be able to be on the BlizzCon stage in the final to hold the trophy like it did a long time ago. This could be one step closer if he was to win this to get into the semifinals. But it is the Red Bull player who has mentioned has won three major tournaments recently, two Red Bull events, standing in his way, needs to win this one. And yeah, you, as you say, MMA, that's all he ever talks about in our studios over in Cologne with WCS Europe. He loves the idea of BlizzCon. He loves the idea of performing well here. And right now he's doing it. All he has to do is take this one more game. Bomber was playing cautiously. He was looking around on the left-hand side, making sure yeah. nothing crazy was going on. Um, because he is up against it here. Mm -hmm. mm, it looks like we are going to see very similar to the previous game. The Widowmine 
Medivac and Marine drop coming out from MMA with the scout, with the Hellion here to figure out what his opponent's doing. He goes up and goes, all right, there's the Barracks Factory. He's kind of made a wall off to prevent any ground attack at the same time that could happen with a drop. It is a, a different Terran opening that could have happened here. But we are going to see, again, the Banshee from Bomber. Can MMA play out the start of this game like he did in the previous one? Because he did start to gain leads there especially with the way that he controlled and kept the pressure on. There is the medivac already going over to the other side of the map. There is a widow mine that's been built by Bomber. Going to be very good for defending against this type of play. Yeah. He's uh, able to uh, deploy that mine properly. MMA looking to try and push on the same kind of route that he went in game number three at the very, very yeah. beginning of it. But this widow mine, as you say... Remember that Bomber's seen nothing in this game. He hasn't scouted. He's got no idea what he's playing against. And the Medivac is waiting. The Banshee in the middle of the map. Perfect play from MMA to wait, then to move in. Oh, tries to find this position. And a few, uh, an SCV here <laughs> actually goes into combat. Yep. The Marines were well positioned to deflect that, though. So at least that's a good start for Bomber. Um, the Viking yeah. does find this in the end. Remember, there is no cloak. So uh, this Banshee has only got a limited amount of time to do damage. Looks like he'll get a single SCV, and that's about it. So mm. not really worth it there for Bomber. He loses the Banshee immediately. Oh, dearie me. Yeah, he has a good idea. I mean, even with seeing this medevac anyway, he had a good idea of what was going on on the other side of the map. So did that Banshee really get much information if it didn't get yeah. that many kills? Not too much This is not good for Bomber Kolaris. He's no. got his natural contained for a little bit here. We already see MMA finishing up or getting close to finishing up that command center on natural. He's going to try and take another command center behind all of this, oh. but it has been spotted by MMA. He instantly yeah. sees that forces a cancel as well. Everything is just going MMA's way here in this series now. Yeah, this is this is not good here. He's getting a bit of damage done to that command center. He's got two Vikings in the mix as uh -oh. well that came out of nowhere, and he's holding this, and the command center's kind of stuck on it, the other side here. It's going to take a lot of damage. He yeah. can't lose it, obviously. There's a mine here to help, and it's going to a start lot burning. of damage is being dealt. SCVs are going to have to come repair this, you'd imagine. But it uh, looks like, no, he's Ooh. going to be able to get this to this right-hand side. And But it did start burning overall. I mean, that yeah. is actually quite costly to start yeah. repairing And Marines this. are still doing damage here. This is Jeez. not good. Oh, this is all spiraling out of control here for Bomber. He wants to break out of this container, yeah. certainly. The Siege Tank is going to help Ooh. out so much. Quick pick up there. As uh, the Medivac, with very little health, gets these units out of there. And Bomber, whew, by the skin of his teeth, holds on. But now tanks are here. But it looks like Bomber should be able to break out of this. Nice pressure in the early stages for MMA, and Bomber's got to be sweating in that booth right now because Ooh. his tournament life is on the line. He loses a Viking there, and oh dearie me. Once again, just like the previous game, Bomber starting to fall apart. This three Viking pressure that he's been using in the past game and now with this game has worked wonders for him. I mean, it, it's almost a disastrous start there for Bomber. If he'd have, imagine yeah. if he'd have lost that command center, it would have just been so bad. But Imagine if MMA picks up eight Marines Ooh. and goes to the to the main mineral line while yeah. this container is here. The pressure's there. He's, he's definitely got this chance to do something. Where does he try to go, though? He just keeps going. He's just going to keep uh, making units, rallying them forwards. It's a good position. He can go on the left-hand side of this mineral line. And because he has the Viking number, he has the air dominant advantage. Oh, this is not good here for Bomber. And he moves over with a winner mine. He's like, maybe oh. I'll defend this area that could get tanked. And well, too late. And uh, a position has been established by MMA and Bomber, not even mining from this expansion. Already a 20 supply difference between the both of them. What has really happened in this last two games here? MMA is reading this TVT so well. Bomber has just been up against it time and time again. And now, how are you supposed to deal with this? Yeah. If, unless he forgot about the idea yeah. of the Vikings and then stimmed and killed them, uh, yeah. that would be nice, but it's not going to happen. MMA is saying, I'm going to hold this position for as long as I can, and I'll make sure you do not counterattack. As we see, no units rallying through the middle. He's keeping everything at home yeah. to make sure that he keeps this lead. He knows he's got a lead. He knows that right now, he is the player that's Looking Ooh. at a semi-final, he's moved through, he's seen these units, and he kills off these units for free. That's is obviously very wonderful here. Yeah. Look at this bomber trying to take a no, huge oh, risk. The SCVs! Oh, he, the, he sees the third base. The SCVs Ooh. have to get out of there. There's no way he's oh, going to be able to take that. Three mules there. Oh. That is not what you want to happen. That is a lot of money that he's just thrown that will not show its return. Go back to the mineral lines, get back there quickly, because right now this sea, uh, this command center is under pressure. You're not going to have any mining there for a long time. Yeah. MMA was able to sniff that out very quickly after seeing that ca potential oh. counterattack. One thing <gasps> a bomber can Oof. do... Wait, he sh wait. No, no! no! Oh! MMA 
picks up a command center. That was not meant to happen. No way, no way. But one thing that Bomber does have going in his favor, he has stim complete. Maybe if he can utilize this upgrade, 10 seconds, and then he'll have it. If he cleans up this force somehow, some way, then good. He can start to take control of the game again. But that was an absolutely disastrous, disastrous command center loss. I cannot believe what we just saw as that command center falls. And now this position, I mean, he sees the army. He sees the extent of the army. Yep. There's still no Vikings really with this. And he can just poke forward, yep. get a few shots on the Raven, come back. And... Does not want to lose that Raven. Does Ooh. not want to lose that. He loses oh! the Raven as well. MMA is taking every small victory he can find. And Bomber crumbling. He's supply blocked. He's feeling this the pressure it. against the former BlizzCon champion. And MMA, who was not this favorite is it. to win this. No one thought he could win this, apparently. And he is turning this around. Bomber is in trouble. He's going for a counterattack. I don't even know if this is going to work. Where is he going? He's got to try and do something. He knows how much of a deficit he's at. MMA, though, he can have siege tanks. He's got Marines and uh, the siege tanks at the back, reinforcing, putting yeah. on pressure at the natural. He enforced the infrastructure to lift off. This is all spiraled way out of control. Stim's about to finish here for MMA as well. Yeah, it looks like he was going to get some damage done here, but SCV's going to come repairing oh. now. Stim's going to be completed for MMA. can start to deflect this. And to be honest, MMA is caught in a very difficult position right now. I mean, Bomber's caught Bomber, in a very yeah. difficult position position. He's got this happening on the, his side of the map. He's been pressured. His attack isn't really doing too much on the other side. And there's a big supply advantage here for the Ace of Terran. Right now, Vikings have won MMA this game. They've done so well for him. And he's pushing on forward. He's doing a lot of damage here. There's very little to Bomber's name right now as MMA is almost 40 supply up. It's going to be difficult. And 1-1 one, one just finished for the bio as well. Absolutely. And now MMA is going to buy himself some time. He'll walk over this army that is trying to pressure his natural and then will join four is to go for one final attack. It's going to take a miracle almost here for Bomber to pull this one back. It's going to be very difficult. He's establishing control in his natural, which means mm. he can mine, he can build, but a very tense situation. Oh, this command center, as MMA realizes, a little bit too late there. For two base mining to one base here, Bomber is starting to crawl back into yeah, this. Yeah. MMA still got an advantage. But not for much longer, the more that this is around. Yep, uh, has to be very, very careful about this. It's both players oh. being contained here. That siege tank on the high ground is good. There's not enough Vikings to be able to control every location in the end. Yep. As he should be able to do a little bit and then push this away. So as much as the Vikings were doing very well oh. for Bomber uh, MMA earlier on, Bomber's looking to push out and break out. Yeah, Bomber sees his opponent's army moving to the left-hand side, as we can see. So he's going to go chase and see what he can find. Well, he does keep the contain on. So this position, not as bad as I first thought it could be here for Bomber. And he's going to pick up this tank and just not lose it here to that uh, siege tank. He repositions. And he's chasing that army. He's expecting it to be on that left cell Naga Tower. So he's got to be careful not to get a sandwich here. Ooh. Bomber's about to take a fight, but he doesn't really know where that other army is currently. MMA Sim didn't realizing that a lot of his army probably wasn't here because of the reinforcement point, killing off all there of that. There it is. There it is. It's coming from the left-hand side here. And MMA joining his forces together in the center. And he has to get them all over there at the same time that a lot of Marines were lost there for MMA. Bomber trying to bring himself back in, gets the siege tank on the retreat out. But again, those Marines reinforcing for MMA. He still has army advantage yeah. and work. Try to drop the back of Bomber's base to see if he can pull his opponent down, find some weaknesses. And the game moves on here. Looks like Bomber's also picked up a medivac full of units. Oh, no. Oh. Multiple oh. medivacs full of units. And there are a lot of Marines here. Uh oh If he stims and pushes into those as he sees them, if he reacts in time and does damage to those medivacs... Oh, my gosh. He's going to spot uh -oh. it. He spots it. He's going to set up a trap. This could be something. Oh! He he loses one on the retreat out there. One, another one takes damage, but that was a big army spot. And he's got no army to be able to deal with this drop. MMA is doing very, very well here right now. And now the supply advantage just opened itself up even more in favor of MMA. He's going to boost his way out of this main base while moving forward with his force. And Bomber lost two medivacs full of units. It seems like that's been a common occurrence for him during this year in WCS. And as we can see, the, the, the stance, the defensive stance from Bomber as he tries to mm. hold on. His MMA pounces forward. He's got a third base behind all of this. He could cross the T on that left-hand side as well whilst doing this drop on the middle and actually killing off all those Marines and then pushing on forwards. If he pushes into those three oh. Cs, he even gets one of the siege tanks as well. He's got a good position on Bomber right now. Yeah. Bomber's force on this right-hand side. 
absolutely is he just going for the counter right now mma scans he sees it's open yeah he gets a free siege tank on the push through here the siege tanks are well divided on the right hand side here for bomber but at the same time these marines are just going uncontested doing whatever they want bomber won the first game of this series but mma started to turn this around with winning two games in a row scv has been pulled off to help deal with this he's losing a couple there but he is going to clear up this in the main base but the third base of mma he's mining more he's able to build more and this is a problem mma is going to join his forces together bomber trying to also find position 95 army supply to bomber but 102 here for mma not that big of a difference so position is important MMA does not know this army's here. And if he gets his army caught around mm. here, MMA's in a weak position, but Bomber is gonna go for it. Oh my God, both this players is, are gonna go for each other. This is an opportunity, well, it's an opportunity for Bomber to try and get himself back into this. He's on his opponent's doorstep. Likewise though, MMA is at the front, stimming forwards, looking to do some damage. That siege tank is not sieged up. It really needs to be sieged up to be able to hold against this. He's gonna go straight in there. One siege tank for free pops out at the MMA's wrong time. MMA's broken the main base first, whereas Bomber's only on the natural. This is bad for Bomber. He's gonna start to lose a lot here, whereas MMA uh -oh. is holding here. Uh -oh. oh, well, that's a lot of marines, actually. The march up of the ramp, trying to do some damage. That siege tank at the back gets taken down here by Bomber. Trying to do as much damage as he can do. He killed off a lot of SCVs, but MMA has set up in his opponent's base. Bomber is flying away, trying to get out of there and just go straight for the base trade. Oh my god, what is happening here? This game has gone absolutely berserk. There's buildings floating everywhere. There's not much here for him. There's nothing here for MMA to defend oh. his main base. Likewise, there's nothing to defend this. But overall, when two armies collide, it looks like MMA is going to be stronger with these tanks. The tanks are going to deal a lot of damage. What a berserk game this is. Yeah, Bomber just trying to claw at any opportunity he can here whilst MMA have the traction behind his army. He's doing a lot of damage to his infrastructure. I mean, He's pretty much non-existent now. The difference in the armies is almost non-existent, but these two engineering oh. bays, it looks like the Marines are coming to deal with them. Yeah. Obviously with 2-2 completed, that's huge, but the armies are so incredibly similar. There's a three tank difference for MMA, but a 10 Marine advantage for Bomber. There are SCVs in the mix that do come into play, but position is everything. The defending player who set up with siege tanks is going to win. A lot of Marines here. There's a 10 Marine advantage, pretty much. So yeah. MMA's army in the middle of the map is stronger. There are three Marines up here for MMA. He's looking to just find any of this production facility on the right-hand side. He has a, technically a yeah. few minerals that he could eke out some extra well, SCV, uh, Marines with, even. Both players have escaped with a command mm. center here. The barracks are being cleaned up. And there's a, a big stim. There's a lot of medivacs there as well to, to keep in consideration, too. Got to be very careful for now. This is a tense situation. Yeah, lots it's of medivacs for both players. Bomber comes back up to this high ground. MMA, he's still not supply blocked, so he no. can make more Marines here, and he's going to be able to defend it. He's found a position where yeah. he can defend he's, this production. Uh oh, uh oh. He's going to go. He might actually no, go. Ooh. No, he's not. Oh, Bomber's going from both angles here with those Marines trying to do some damage where he can, and those siege tanks at the back are doing a lot here for Bomber. But, but MMA, MMA, he's able to eke it out. He gets on top of the siege tanks. GG.